We are back. My next guest tonight, please welcome a very funny guy, Artie Lang. Our next guest is one of the funniest guys there is. He eats devil dogs for breakfast and cigarettes for lunch. Hey, ladies, here he is, Artie Lang. We are joined right now by a hilarious comedian. His latest project, The Artie Quitter Podcast, is available through artiequitter.com. Please give a warm welcome to a good friend of the show. Here's Artie Lang, ladies and gentlemen. Our next guest is a uh, regular on the Howard Stern uh, radio program and the author of this uh, New York Times bestseller entitled Too Fat to Fish. Here he is, the very funny Artie Lang. Oh, Artie. It always makes me laugh when I see Artie Lang on stage. <laughs> Knowing I'm going to outlive him. <laughs> Amanda's round and fat a baseball. He's been in such movies as Lost and Found, Dirty Work, The Fourth Floor. Did I say Dirty Work? Oh yeah, he was in that Elf movie for about five freaking seconds. He was some sort of all-county third baseman in high school, in which he was held back from graduating because he had to go to summer school. He's been arrested for hitting a cop. He's been in rehab for coke. He drinks like a fish. He smokes like a chimney. And when he bets, he bets big and he loses big and he loses big and he loses bigger. The man who paid $500 to a Las Vegas hooker that he didn't know was a hooker before he had sex with her. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Artie Lang. I got a second. Wait, I got to take a, are we on? I actually have to start our 250th episode by taking a diabetic piss. <laughs> Well, I don't want to, you know, I got to do it. Are now. you giving the audience the gift of me? I got to do it now. Well, <laughs> that's an interesting question. <laughs> you know what, guys? Listen, this is Third Field Nation. <laughs> this is Third Field Nation. Listen, I already decided to give the audience the gift of me for the 250 episode of Third Field Nation. <laughs> Listen, it's a start of this, this is very special <laughs> show. It's a 250 episode. <laughs> 250th original episode of Artie Quillen's podcast, <laughs> the only like uncensored podcast. But as soon as Dan turns on the microphone and points on with that real crazy point that he does, that, that nervous point, uh, attached to that hairy arm, which is attached to that flabby body, which is attached to those yellow feet. And they have, uh, you put that all together and you got Dan Flano. This is Sir Uh Yeah. <laughs> Sir, so oh, you know, I can describe how I look. I look like imagine if uh, the wrestling uh, guy, uh, uh, gorgeous George, had a, a bunch, added like two hundred forty pounds to his physique, <laughs> and had a lisp, and sat at home all day calling himself, calling himself Sir Fernando. Uh, for the two hundred fifty episode, already decided it's just already in dead. It's two o'clock in the morning. It's actually two fourteen a.m. <laughs> It's actually Wednesday. The Mexican maid Selma came when she left. I said, Selma? She said, who are you? I said, I'm Sir Fernando. She said, who are you? I said, I'm Sir Fernando. She said, who are you? I said, I'm Sir Fernando. <laughs> All psychotic. Sometimes I repeat words or phrases, and my wife, who I refer to as honey, hits me in the back of the head, hits me in the back of the head. Hits me in the back of the head. Hits me. <laughs> Thank you. And I start talking again. Uh, so that's what happened. But yeah, I was doing both characters in a very complex comedic bit. Sometimes my comedic bits get very complex. Very complex. Very complex. Very complex. Very complex. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I, uh, yeah, what happens is I, I, I repeat them sometimes. But I was doing, who was I doing? I was doing the Mexican Maid Silva <laughs> and myself discussing Mr. Artie. <laughs> Mr. Artie, sleep. Yes, he sleep. But who are you? <laughs> what do you do with Dan? <laughs> uh, Dan is not here now. Where Dan? <laughs> Dan is down uh, buying some stuff to cook. <laughs> you mean food? <laughs> yes, I mean food. <laughs> what else you cook besides food? Sometimes I cook people. <laughs> You cook people? Sometimes. Where you cook the people? Sometimes you do it in Minnesota. 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 Oh, sorry. You cook people and drink soda? No. Minnesota. 
Minnesota? Why are you doing Minnesota? Are you mean like a small soda, mini soda? No. That's not what I'm talking about. Forget about drinking. It's not soda you drink. It's the state. This day, the state of Minnesota. I not go there. I stay here. Why stay here? Are you legal? Uh, the, uh, Mr. Trump built the wall. Yes. Are you for the wall, Selma? <laughs> I'm for the wall. I tell people I'm for the wall. I, I don't want to go back on the wall. What does that mean? That means I have your future in my hands. Your future is in my disgusting, sweaty palms. That When I put my persona back on, it, it, it got the same sweaty. Your persona? Yes, my persona. KS persona. What is this? What you do with Dan? <laughs> Dan is downstairs. He'll be a pint. What you do, Mr. Dan? He's downstairs. <laughs> what did he wear? You know, you know, Mr. Dan, you, you proved to me. You know, Mr. Dan. Yes, I know Mr. Dan. How do you know him? Uh, describe it to me. He's good looking. No, wrong. <laughs> I like him. I, I, I like him, but good looking. No. You know Antonio Banderas. I, I do agree. Dan's not as good looking as Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, he, wa- he wears some sweatpants. Very high with the white socks. You Okay, you, I understand. You know him. Yeah, and he wears the slippers. I get it. You're making me sick. Stop. No one else look like that. I, you know Mr. Dan, but he okay, right? You don't do nothing, Mr. Dan. Am I in danger? You're not in danger. Unless you're here legally. Because then I have to turn you in. <laughs> With the help of Sir Mixoplex. Sir Mixoplex. Sir Mixoplex. Sir Mixoplex. Sir Mixoplex. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. With the help of Sir Mixoplex. <laughs> Who else? And Cory Gottlion. <laughs> Cory Gottlion. Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris. Gunner. Gunner. <laughs> Mr. Morris. You understand? I get it. All the people on the Twitter. Yeah. The Ricker from L.A.? <laughs> Yes, Rick from L.A. I like a Rick from L.A. Yes. You say the gunner? Yes. How about the Monica? I said Monica. I said Monica. I said Monica. Yeah, I like her. I like a Monica on the, the Twitter. Uh, who else? Rick from L.A. We sent him. We sent him, bitch. How dare you yell at me? Where Mr. R.T.? He find out you yell at me, you're in bigger trouble. You in bigger trouble. Well, I'm here for the 250th episode of the show. <laughs> Too fatty. That's you look more than 250. You look like 340. We're not talking about my weight. You Mexican bitch. Oh. How dare how dare you say something that got out to me? You racist. You from the Minnesota? Uh, the uh, you from the gangs in Minnesota? You from like a Timothy McVeigh? You blowing this shit up? You don't blow this shit up. You don't blow Mr. Lang up. <laughs> Mr. Lang is my friend. He give me extra money. <laughs> he give me extra money to clean up Dan's arm hair. Oh, no. Sometimes the hair is on I understand. <laughs> Dan has enormous arm hair. You want to see what I clean up every day his arm hair? <laughs> and I say it to Mr. Lang, you're such a nice person. I say, how Dan arm hair get in your sink, Mr. Lang? <laughs> I, I accuse Mr. Lang. Of shaving in the sink because it looked like he'd shave and he corrected me right away and I felt so bad he said that is for Dan's hair and I said oh god I'm so sorry I'm so sorry I was out of line I'm sorry yes sometimes he shaves his hair in the uh, artist bathroom oh. how you know how you know that uh, the stuff fan in Asia <laughs> stuff <friend Nathan. laughs> what is you call I you could call me Jerry Oh, like a the Jericho? No. Like a the Jerry the Buckheimer? <laughs> yes, like Jerry Buckheimer. I'm not talented. I'm going to do some stuff with Jerry Buckheimer, actually. I'm writing a script. That's why I have my persona on. Okay. So Mr. Dan coming back, I hear him. He got the key. I know Mr. Dan's still looking for his own apartment. He started about two years ago. He's, yes, yeah, I understand that. Artie secretly tells me he's going crazy. But he likes the dance here. He does. He does. 
<laughs> he likes that he's here. He does. 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 Come on, buddy. Please. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to go sit in the corner, and I won't make another peep unless I'm needed. Okay, I start the cleaner now. I clean, and you stay in the corner. We both make no noise while they do the podcast. The podcast will pay the bills. You understand? The podcast pay the bills, and uh, Mr. Uh, Falato is an army I clean. And uh, Artie had no hair, no way. He, he always shaved the right place. Oh. Artie's very efficient. Very efficient. That's right. Let me ask you something. Was it you who moved your bowels on the balcony last week? What are you talking about? Uh, someone take a bigger shit on the balcony. You're looking at Minnesota militia shit. Are you accusing me of, of, of moving my bowels for my own grandfront? My own grandfront. My own grandfront. My own grandfront. What a grandfront. That means for my own pleasure. Yeah, I accuse you. You move your bowels. Well, Mr. Lang asked me not to use the bathroom ever for anything, even the urination. 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 So tell him that I hope we get a lot done. Oh, wait, I'm slipping into accents. Wait, I said something. I said something in Selma I meant to say in Mr. Plex. Wait a minute. What am I saying? Uh, you tell Mr. Artie I'm going to clean the bathroom. Oh, wait a minute. That's Mr. Plex. I'm sorry. Now I'm Mr. Plex. Wait, I said that as Corey got the on. I'm mixing up Corey Gottlieb on Mixaplex, Stern Fan Nation, and some of the maid. And the Ricker from LA. <laughs> I'm sitting in the corner and ready. And I clean out Eddie. And we're back. I'm Hardy. I'm back to Hardy. Holy shit, I got a dry mouth. I think I just pissed in my pants. All right, let me take a diabetic piss. Well, yeah, right. This is our 250th episode. I got some show notes to go over. Uh, this episode's going to be me and Danny shooting the shit. I know we're, already, we're 15 minutes deep and I can't talk. Let me piss. You want to talk or you can pause or talk, whatever. I wonder if the cord goes all the way to John. To John? Oh, you know what I'll do? I'll just piss out here. I'll piss on this. Oh, no. We got an Wait, I got something. I got... Hold what? On. Your, I, your I, mouth? Give me one second. Give me one no, second. Dan, stop. Stop. I can't stop. Dan, get, Dan, you can see my cock. Get away from Dan. I'm pissing away, Dan. Just move. Dan, do not come out of the fucking bedroom. You're such a fruit, man. I caught you looking at my dick. What a fruit. I got an industrial size uh, garbage can so I can piss in it and not have to leave you guys for diabetic pisses because, my God, I, I, I re listen to some of Dan talking while I piss. It is unlistenable shit. Well, okay, some show notes. I, uh, we're going to be at the stress factory with a big podcast. And our guests are going to be. All right, I'm done, Dan. Jesus Christ. I need some water. I can't do Stern Fan Nation that long. What is it? Dan, no. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Look, Dan, I'm putting it right in the garbage can. Ready? Uh. Dan got me a fucking bedpan piss thing that you're doing. That. <laughs> That's when you lean over and piss. And I, you would see my dick, so you want to see my dick. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I got this thing, so it's a big bag, so when you throw it out, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get pissed on me, but you probably bathe in my piss. Oh, suck. You get to the garbage, you get to the garbage can, you go, yes, <laughs> yes, this is the magical radio you're in. Yes, this is what the magical fairy told me about. When I said, how do I get on Howard Stern? They said, this is Artie's magical urine. And it gets you on the Howard Stern show. Oh, I was left with the Steve Dollar mayonnaise. I put that on every day and it did nothing. And Steve Dollar accused me of pilferaging for personal aggrandizement. Oh, my God. Oh, this is the special love urine. Oh, I love him. With this urine, according to the fairy, according to the radio fairy, <laughs> if I put this urine on every day for the next 30 days, I'll be the third host of the Howard Stern <laughs> Show. It'll be me who they're calling Baby Gorilla. It'll be me playing Carnegie Hall. It'll be me bossing me around. It'll be me calling me gay. <laughs> It'll be me making fun of Rick Steve because of me. It'll be me making fun of me getting the sweats around Rick Steve <laughs> and running out of the room speeches. It'll be me calling me gay. 
does that make me gay? I don't. It'll be me telling me to book Stern Fan Nation his own hotel room, and then me telling me I forgot to book it, and then me telling me I screwed up again. It'll be me telling me why didn't I tell you about the 250th episode and wait till we're on the air when I'm afraid to say I really forgot it, so I made up an excuse. It'll be me lying about uh, having dinner with uh, Michael Douglas. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, Dan is such a fucking. Uh, the first thing I'm going to get into is again some show notes, but uh, <laughs> it'll be me with the magic urine. Those are not in the show notes. Now that the magic urine is all over my face, is that why your skin's yellow? Because you're bathing it. Because you're oh. you, you live well. Your liver's not jaundice. <laughs> I guess it's it's from spitting the magic urine. Why would you start with your toes though? They're yellow. I put it all over my toes. <laughs> Uh, until my toes look like Della Reese's toes in Harlem Nights. <laughs> oh, okay, well, listen. What should I do for a show notes? No, I, you know, I'll do the Megyn Kelly fucking <laughs> interview. The, the fucking... Uh, Megyn Kelly. I, again, I watch a lot of Fox News. Now. <laughs> That's obvious. Thank God someone does. Dan is so liberal. <laughs> Dan is I'm so, watching the other side. I, I don't want you to miss anything. You are such a radical. I am not. I some political correctness has been at its worst lately. It really has, and it it, it does. Even if you don't agree ideologically with some of these fucking right wing people, you you hate the liberals so much that you want to just do anything that they're against. That's what happens. That's what show business is. It's so sickening. Liberal Hollywood is so sickening. Like Mark Ruffalo, I, I love that guy as an actor. I'm a fan of everything he does almost. Well, not everything. <laughs> but I just watched that spotlight. He's good in that. Zodiac, even in supporting roles, he's good in that. Uh, actually, I can't think of anything else. But you can count on me. I never saw that. <laughs> or is that you saying that? <laughs> no. You can count on me, buddy. Is that a movie? or is that a mo It's one of his first movies. It is, because I follow him. Because <laughs> he's a big Elizabeth Warren supporter. <laughs> I see him at all the rallies. <laughs> Why do these actors get involved with politics Ugh. so much? It's sickening. Sickening. <laughs> a guy in the Midwest, the blue-collar white vote, that's the silent majority. Another way of saying the Klan. <laughs> <laughs> no. I hope that's not the case. Because when I say political incorrect, or the way I used to like to be, uh, there's idiots out there who equate political uh, uh, correctness with are you racist or not <laughs> I don't think being politically incorrect means you're racist that like sir, like what Stern Fan Nation goes they're so PC over there <laughs> they're so uptight and I said why here's why he thought they were uptight at the wrap up show he goes they're so uptight they just did a combination of people <laughs> what do I do All right. uh, yeah I called up they're so uptight Artie the Stern Fan Nation it's, they're so uptight I go why are they so because I called the wrap up show <laughs> And uh, who was it? Uh, oh, Big Black. Big Black was a guy there. I, I love it. Wait, was it the King of All Blacks? What are the black guys? <laughs> Say King of All Blacks. It was Big Black, King of... No, not Big Black. He, I think he died of diabetes. Or they amputated his neck. I think he died after that. <laughs> uh, Big Black or, or the, the black guy who fought Cabby or somebody in the fight. Anyway, one of those guys. Call, call it King of All Blacks, who I used to love. King of all blacks just wanted he wanted everything to be white in his life, so we have so he'd have you know his kid get to a good school. I like living next to Jews. Fuck, fuck the fucking fuck black people, man. I want I want my kids' hair to be straight. I'm gonna get my hair. My kids' hair's gonna be straight. I wear all the latest shit, man. My house is next to Jews. I, I'm a garbage man. I save up my money. <laughs> I say I'm sorry I live next to with you. My dentist is a Jew, my fucking black guy. Fuck that shit. Man, my faucets in my house is mowing. I got mowing faucets. <laughs> and he was like, mock on you if you weren't wearing the latest shit. Like you oh, he's still wearing a fucking Nike swish on his fucking I'm like, that's not in anymore. Fuck your shit, man, you dumbass. <laughs> Oh, I still wearing a fucking t-shirt with no sleeve. I <laughs> fucking get in the loom, motherfucker. Like a fucking wop ass get in. If you need the news, I'm driving a fucking Mercedes truck. That's what I'm fucking driving. <laughs> That's what I'm driving. You got a Mercedes truck, motherfucker. I'm the king. <laughs> king of all blacks. Funny fucking guy. So fucking funny. I miss him. I miss the king of all blacks. I do. <laughs> 
I used to love talking to that guy. He was so funny because he was so honest, politically incorrect and honest. And the conversations I had with him, they were politically incorrect <laughs> because they were, you know, they, they, it wasn't like racist. It was two guys joking around. You, you can't, uh, there's a funny story I had. I'm applying for something in court. I want to have a gun license. And uh, so I went to court in Newark. And uh, there's a reason I have to, because I'm a convicted felon. It's a hard thing. But I'm going to shoot a movie, long story, or a TV show in California. I might for a little while. And uh, I, I want to have a gun for a certain reason. And uh, it's I, not me, is I, it? I, uh, no. <laughs> Again, crowbarring in something terrible. Ruining the flow. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> it's not me, is it? <laughs> Uh, so I, uh, yeah, I'm in court, in, in, a, in a court, I'm in a, this place where you apply for shit like that above the courtroom. Um, and I'm talking to an older African American woman who's in charge of that. <laughs> and I want to tell the story so bad because it's funny. But uh, again, I, I digress. I, I think twice about telling the story because I have to uh, do her voice. <laughs> and she does not sound like Michelle Obama. <laughs> okay. And, and again, I don't mind, uh, you know, I'm Italian, <laughs> I guess Italian-American, whatever the fuck you want to call me. I'm a North Jersey guy, I'm an Italian heritage, my mom, whatever. I'm proud of it, but, uh, you know, go, goof away. Have fun. <laughs> I'm more entertained when an Italian guy in the movie sounds like Joe Pesci <laughs> in Goodfellas. What the fuck? I, I 7,000 I charge you. <laughs> I have uncles, I have people, you know, all the guys in the neighborhood that get uh, offended by that. Uh, who can, uh, come on, guys. <laughs> it's hilarious, because it's true. I, I, I grew up in an area where most white people, uh, most Italian white people talk like that. <laughs> Italian American, that's how we talk. Ah, fuck, 7,000 Italian. <laughs> Dan's a rich kid, he probably grew up in all you know. Like, oh, oh, hello, Daniel. <laughs> this is your father. <laughs> <laughs> the money I've left you will be with the Jewish lawyer. <laughs> Daniel, I heard you're spreading that fat man's urine all over your head. Oh, I hope that's uh, not true. For two reasons. One, I'm homophobic. <laughs> two, you don't need to. I'll buy you a radio station. <laughs> no, Daddy, I want to do it on my own. I appreciate the work ethic. <laughs> but let Daddy buy you a radio station. And I'll hire this fat man. <laughs> And I'll, I'll make you his boss. I'll triple whatever he makes in life. I'll buy him. Of course, he's, at, he's for sale. <laughs> uh, damn right, by the way. And I'll say, okay, fat man. Uh, I won't even remember his name. I'll say, listen, fat man. You now work for Daniel, my son. And he'll tell you what to do. If he wants to be on the air, you fake laugh at him. You say you're so funny. You only hire people in there. This Flippo boy, Flippin <laughs> James Flippo, I don't know his real name. <laughs> the disgusting gutter snipe Met fan. Yeah. The one who has two Met jerseys and two uh, Yankee and uh, Giant jerseys. Yeah, he'll also be inferior to Daniel. <laughs> and Daniel will say something and tell Flippin he has to laugh. <laughs> Take that. And you'll have a wonderful time over there. <laughs> and uh, that's what it's going to be like. No more spreading. You spread Daniel's urine on your face. <laughs> And if you have a problem with that, I'll I'll give you a certain amount of money, and you'll do it, because you're a whore. Don't you want your mother never to have to worry about a heating bill again? Right. How? And he's right. I'll have a price. How much? How fucking much? I'll take a fucking shower in it. I'll get that golden shower pumping. Uh, anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, uh, stereotypical voices, stereotypical voices. That's my point. But like, like uh, you know, I'm a, you, a lot, again, I hate to bring up millennials all the time. I don't know what to call people. Young people, I guess, millennials, whatever the fuck. A lot of these, you know, educated white, little white kids, spoiled kids, they, all they hear, uh, you know, when they hear a black person talk is, you know, Blair Underwood <laughs> arguing a case on the L.A. law. Or, uh, you know, Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, the president. There's, there's not a more articulate man on the planet Earth. And, you know, Italians had their own version. Mario Cuomo. Uh, you know, and his fucking two idiot sons now. 
got Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo's ego is so out of control. <laughs> they might have to physically put him in a straitjacket. <laughs> he is so thrilled with himself. <laughs> The way he like goofs on the girls, like the, that he's like, hey, what's up, Tam? How are you? Uh, you know, inside jokes about hey, the weekend. All I know is over here, uh, this pollster. <laughs> they have eight thousand pollsters on. Who's the guy, Charles Krautheimer? That's Fox News, right? Yes. That guy is very difficult to watch. <laughs> I guess he's a smart guy. Coming up, Charles Krauthammer gives an analysis. What they should say is, coming up, we'll put a camera on Charles Krauthammer, and he's going to try to breathe for four minutes. Oh. And we're going to watch it. It's so hard to watch him. Well, I mean, Panova has painted himself into a corner. And I think if he doesn't win it yet, he's going to have to come back. And Hillary's super bad. We'll come back with more money in the coffers of Bernie Sanders, who's now starting to affect the GOP. We're out of time, John. Starting to, the GOP, we're out of time. Just talk to your wife. Uh, what? Hello? Just, we're going to talk to uh, George Will now. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Can you breathe? Uh, you know, uh, we got to go to a commercial about a catheter. All right. Uh, yeah. I use catheters. Are you in the commercial? No, then we have to go. Well, I, I, I use the brand of catheter that we're going to advertise. Do you want to say something about it? Oh, well, I could if you want. Uh, huh? Where's the Asian Where's the Asian nurse that puts on a catheter in? Are you the Asian nurse? No, I'm George Will. Oh, I George. <laughs> so disconcerting. My point is, Stereotypical Italians, black people. That's where comedy comes from. And to do comedy sometimes, I may have to do the stereotypical voices. I beg of you, young people, please let me do the stereotypical voices. I love it. I love it. In a, in a story that's funny, I may have to do a, a voice. By the way, I'll be doing an exact impression of this woman. That she t uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the story because you know why I just realized we're on my podcast. I can do whatever the fuck I want. This is the beauty of it. This is why you pay a quarter a day. I don't have sponsors. There's no one to say, all right, listen, I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm Dick Berenger. I'm in the uh, I'm in standards and practices, and uh, yeah, you know Potato King is our one of our clients. Potato King, yeah, they uh, sell potatoes. They're the king of it. Yeah. They've got a franchise that uh, is uh, in your hometown, and they uh, they've spent a lot of money with the uh, with the uh, you know with the, for the show on advertising. We 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 uh, we actually write about two hundred fifty dollars a day with them. And uh, the salesman, by the way, you know our salesman was in charge of Potato King. He sold them. Do you want to meet him? No. I have absolutely no interest in meeting him. Well, he's a big fan. He wants to meet you. And the guy from Potato King would love to have you at lunch. He'll buy. It's you, and uh, you don't want to meet uh, Bruce Beauravage? He's the head of sales? No. I don't want to go near him. Okay, great. So I'll just set up that lunch. Don't. I'm not going. Anyway, they love you. And, but they sort of are worried. And again, $250 a day, that's a lot of money. Uh, they, 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 you, you used in a story a stereotypical black voice. <laughs> they felt that it was offensive to African Americans the <laughs> voice used, and they, they feel that it's not a real voice. That voice you're talking like, you're doing a voice from 1930. We all know that. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm doing a voice from the other day that I heard. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, 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 the Potato King guy says that's just from Step and Fetch It movies. From you. No, no, no. That's how black people talk. We're in from Newark, most of them. <laughs> and you know, most Italian people talk like Joe Pesci in Goodfellas, where I'm from, too. All right? I'm doing a realistic voice. Not everybody's articulate on the TV show. And this woman was hilarious. And I'm not calling her dumb. I'm saying this is where you come from. Sly Stallone's not a dummy, but he sounds retarded. <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> Guy's got the two Oscars for screenplays. <laughs> now this woman sounded dumb, but this but actually this woman's an example of I think she both sounded dumb and was actually dumb. <laughs> I'm not sure. But in the application, 
she had to ask me how much money I made. <laughs> In 2014 and 15 or something, annually. And, uh, you know, I mean, you guys know I'm in show business. I do well for myself. Uh, I, I had bank statements and my, uh, my, my account gave me my, uh, you know, my slips or whatever I book, you know, whatever. I don't know. And I, and I couldn't lie. I, she said, I need to know the real amount of money because it's something with, it's a, you know, they got to do things very precisely with what class you might be in or might not be in. It's a very, by the way, offensive test you have to take, I think. But, you know, look, it's uh, they're trying to keep stuff safe, I guess. So, yeah, I don't think it's surprising to people that, uh, you know, the year I had, I happened to have a book out that year and um, was last year some of my direct TV money. And, uh, you know, again, this is a black woman who deals with welfare people all day. And a lot of times when she says, what do you make in a year? They, they say, you know, I don't know. And they probably say uh, nothing. <laughs> Whether on welfare or something. You know. So I said the right figure, which might, I guess it might be necessary for the story. Uh, I, I actually made $1.2 million was what I made in 2014. And... I said one point two million dollars, and she looked at me and said, "Huh?" <laughs> I said, uh, "I said, yeah, you know, I just, you know, I, uh, I was very uh, embarrassed." I said, "I did one point two. I said, "I have the figures here." She goes, "What? <laughs> was it a joke?" I said, "No, no, no, it's not a joke. It's like I mean, they're gonna, what the fuck? What the fuck you do?" <laughs> This is in the middle of a, like a professional office screaming it in the cube. I said, uh, I'm a comedian. What's she? <laughs> now, she said, she, like, you know, very loud. She said, you ain't that funny. How funny are you with? I said, I used to work for a guy who made $100 million a year. She, who the fuck that be? Who the fuck that be? That's what she said. I'm not lying. I have witnesses. I said, oh my God, I'm joking around, but that's my actual salary, so can we move on? <laughs> she. <laughs> that really true? I said, no, I, I made up all these bank documents. Uh, I, I, I phonied these up. I had false documents made up so I could come here and fuck with you. <laughs> she. She had eight teeth. Okay? And they weren't all in her head. <laughs> Somewhere in her purse. <laughs> now she's writing out this application. And I'm like, this woman gets people guns. <laughs> now she got to get by me to get to the next level. I said, okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> she didn't make that money. <laughs> How you do that? She goes, what was your last paycheck for? So I, I said, I don't know. I did stand up the other day. It's not, I said, it's not a steady thing. I said, I do a podcast. She said, a what? <laughs> I said, let's just move on. Let's just move on. All right. So what do I have paid to? <laughs> and the last check I happen to get is the um, the, uh, the first check in the advance for my book. <laughs> I just said, I don't know, the last check I got, I mean, technically, I, I now I'm, I'm very, I don't want to talk anymore. I'm like, you know what, I don't want anything. I want to want the gun. I want to leave. But I, I, it, it's very, it's better for my life and, and my work situation if I get this right now. So, <laughs> Uh, people are expecting it away. I said, I have, well, I'll go through with this. But now it's very discontent. Like, again, I'm not saying this. To, I didn't say this to brag to her. I'm, she wants the real information, and she actually needs it. So I said, uh, I don't know. I said, I have a, I'm going to write a book. She goes, a book? <laughs> I said, yeah. She. <laughs> she kept saying she. Uh, louder and louder. <laughs> and I said, a book? Yeah, I don't know. She goes, what the book? She, I said, it's like my third book. She goes, what the book? She made this, she said this sentence. Uh, it's not so much of a sentence, she said this sound. <laughs> this sound came out of her mouth. What the boogie? I said, what? She goes, what the boogie? I said, what the boogie? What the, what the boogie? I said, what the, what is the book? What the, what the book is? What is the book? Yeah. What is the book? Yeah, what the fuck? She's mad at me, because I don't understand it. I don't understand English. <laughs> So she said, it's a comedy book about my life, and gambling, goofing on stuff. She said, and then she went, she. I said, everyone, which I said, are you going to keep saying, I didn't say this story in my head. I'm like, can you keep saying shit? I'm like, yeah, that's what it's about. She goes, what did they pay you that shit? What did they pay me for that shit? Yeah, yeah. 
Because I went to high school with a lot of black kids, and I started to speak, you know, black, whitish, black English, black bl- English, we, like Spanglish. <laughs> uh, and again, with Italian people, it's the same thing. Malcolm Frankie, you got to, you know, you got to learn how to talk like him. Me, <laughs> did you see that guy? What did he do? Then what did you do? Then what did he do? And Michael Frankie, Italians and blacks mingling. That's what was great. Michael Frankie talking to this woman would be great. <laughs> hey, what he did? Did I want to get a gun? To go to, what he did? He go. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I get a gun over here. <laughs> hey, what he did? He get it by the city. Yeah, you know, I don't know that book. <laughs> you see that guy? The way he, what did he I don't know. That's how blue collar Americans interact. That's an Italian guy, a black. guy. You know, that's how they spoke. I don't know. Anything got done. How did anything get done? That's why people <laughs> stuck together. I'm not promoting segregation. <laughs> but that's why people stuck to their own kind. Do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> that's why we need the wall. <laughs> and like Mr. Trump said, there'll be a little door for good Mexicans. <laughs> he actually said that. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the. There'll be a little door for good Mexicans. <laughs> and Mr. Langer, Selma, am I the good Mexican? <laughs> yes, Selma, I'm sorry. I know you're standing there with Stern Foundation. <laughs> yes, I told you that already. I said you're the good Mexicans. You're part of the good Mexicans. <laughs> Could you stop talking, Stern Foundation? <laughs> okay, I've been very quiet the whole time. I understand that. Yes, you're part of the good Mexicans. So. Yes, yeah, so. She kept saying she, and then every question was, I, I didn't even know if they were really on the thing. Like, she was enamored. First of all, I could have fucked her. I, oh. think she, I think she was a married woman, too, mid-50s. Mid-50s, wearing a dress. I don't even know the color. <laughs> there were, like, uh, like Christmas ornaments on it. <laughs> she had Christmas ornaments <laughs> on the dress. It's said, okay, your application will work out. So, uh, then she goes, what kind of car you drive? <laughs> I said, is that on the thing? Goes, yeah, I need to know. And I, lo- I looked at it. It did say car. I guess part of your identity or whatever. I don't know what the fuck she wants here to identify you completely. About what. I said, I drive, a, I drive a Range Rover. She goes, shit. <laughs> she goes, yeah, you, you pay that out, right? You got the payments on it? <laughs> I said, no, I bought a cash. Shit. <laughs> How much you pay that? <laughs> It said right here, I need to know how much the vehicle worth. <laughs> I said, I paid 73000 Shit. <laughs> the shits kept getting louder. <laughs> I, you got a mortgage on your house? I said, no, I asked, shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's your house worth? And I told him what the condo here was. Shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> what your net worth be? Huh? <laughs> your net worth, man. What do you want you work? <laughs> My net worth? Yeah. <laughs> then I told her what it says on the... I said, go to... Cele- <laughs> I said, I goofed. I said, go to celebritynetworth.com. She goes, what? <laughs> I said, go ahead. So she couldn't wait. She goes, oh, my God. Punched in my name. My picture goes, I go, that you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, it is me. That you saw what it says on Celebrity Network. Like, I'm about to, I'll put it to you this way. CelebrityNetworth.com is what I should be worth. <laughs> no one called the owner of CelebrityNetworth.com and told him that you know Denver didn't cover a couple of times. <laughs> she go, God damn! <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, that's probably what I should be worth. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm going to tell my husband what you were. <laughs> I said, I thought this was confidential. She goes, I'm kidding, man. I would never do that yet, right? Everyone she ever met knew 30 seconds after I left that <laughs> See ya. And, uh, yeah. It's just whatever. I mean, just so unprofessional. She goes, all right, I got her information. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You'll be fine. Well, you know, you got a little record here. You know, uh, you, I say you had a palm there. <laughs> she goes, I don't understand the record. How you do? How you make all that money when you a drug addict? <laughs> she goes, where's, I go, where's it say I'm a drug addict? She, she, points, <laughs> she points to my bio, the first bio. She goes, Mr. Lang, a drug addict. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Mr. Lang, a well-known drug addict. <laughs> I said, oh, there. And then she pointed to my next uh, biography, and it said, drug addict, Artie Lang. The first two words were drug addict. The third one didn't have me as a drug addict. That said, the famous junkie. <laughs> famous junkie. She, she go, where you go to college? I said, I didn't go to college. She goes, Steer. You ain't go to college? And you make all that money, you ain't go to college? Why, boy, I tell my fucking grandson that he got to go to college. You's a lucky motherfucker. I said, you're right, I'm lucky. Absolutely. So t- you tell your grandkids to probably go to college. She, I ain't got some money for college. I said, I bet you you didn't have no, you didn't pay for your own college. I said, no. I said, because I didn't go to college. <laughs> Gee. It. I said, as a matter of fact, I don't have a high school diploma. I can't find it because I didn't graduate on time. I had to go to summer school. Summer school? <laughs> would your ass fail? I said, everything. <laughs> I said, history. English. I said, Jim, you failed, Jim. <laughs> would you retarded? I said, you're asking me that question? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. She found that I'd go to college, and I and she's like, wow, man, how do you do that in country? <laughs> this country don't give nobody no opportunity. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. That's the reason. That's the reason. <laughs> That's the reason I'm a successful comic, because I have more opportunities <laughs> than you. <laughs> well, listen. Long story short, we hit it off. I'm dating her. <laughs> oh, I would have fucked her. I would have loved it. I would have loved it. Take one for the country. So, I told my you know my mom's in the hospital by the way, and uh, she uh, looked like she might have to have a second operation. She went in for an operation, and uh, it went great. And uh, but she went into what they call these AFib she's been having, and I talked to her, and she's fine with. Some people know her. Especially people who listen to the podcast. I really do consider you family. I said, Mom, I'm going to tell them because they'll send you happy thoughts. The ones that don't are either kidding or who cares about them. But uh, the real fans will. And my mother is spiritual like that. So she, she she's happy to hear, maybe. I'm not, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm sure, because uh, I'd feel the same way about you guys. I consider you family, but uh, I'm sure my mother would welcome any prayers or, if you're not religious, some nice thoughts from Mix and Plix and Gunner and Monica, <laughs> Rick from L.A., all you guys, even SFN. Yes, I'm sending positive thoughts. <laughs> Mrs. Lang, this is SFN. I don't know. I'm not allowed to have your number, so I'm sending you positive <laughs> thoughts. Uh, I'm DMing you positive <laughs> thoughts in my head. You're getting a direct message from my head. <laughs> my mother. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Mrs. Bruce Lang, I'm Sir I'm Sir Why are you in my uh, hotel, uh, hospital room? <laughs> Love this. Uh, your, son gave me, your son Danny gave me the address. <laughs> That's not my son. Danny Farrell gave me the address. <laughs> Who, Danny? I'll kill him. My God, I can't even joke about that. What I just said, that, my God, that scenario gives me a headache <laughs> if that ever happened. But, uh, yeah, so uh, th- th- she's in there and uh, she doesn't have to have the second operation as of right now. And she's getting better and, uh, you know, uh, she is my strength. I love her so much. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's hard to even see her as such a strong person who just uh, does things her own way. And, and someone who fiercely takes care of her family, fiercely, in a way that's not seen anymore, I don't think. Uh, just, just an incredible person, my mother. Such, such, such a, uh, you know, just a better example of a human being in, in me, than me in every way. And uh, her, her strength is making her get through something that other people might have had some trouble with. So she's doing fine, but, uh, you know, I thought about it. The hardcore podcast fans, she'd appreciate it. If you got some time, send her some uh, love. And uh, I'd appreciate it, too. But, you know, it, my mother, of course, being an Italian woman uh, who didn't go to college, uh, grew up in the Newark and East Orange area, and uh, she enjoys a good racist story. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. No, my mother gets that, you know, when you tell a story about Italian people in the city or black people, Irish people, but, you know, they might not sound 
like the guy, the, the kids on Nickelodeon. <laughs> Let's start an improv group, Terry. <laughs> it's great. I do plenty of characters. You're a beautiful girl, and Todd is black. <laughs> no, it's not all the rainbow colors. <laughs> Ironically enough, Al Sharpton, who brings everybody together, could not sound more African American. <laughs> the prosecution says you're guilty. <laughs> That's why Tawana Brawley was <laughs> raped. And any motherfucker say different in the city council gonna have my ass. <laughs> I'm out motherfucker Sharpton. <laughs> We's marching. <laughs> yeah. Until the until the case doesn't make him any money, then he disappears. <laughs> Where's Al? He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. Uh, so, you know, my mother was laughing so hard uh, at the story. And, and I, I went to high school with a lot of black kids. My high school was all black. It was like 33% black, Irish, and Italian. Uh, <laughs> and I tell you, we had an amazing football team. The Pisans and the and the black kids and the a couple of those tough Irish kids made of brick. <laughs> Some Irish kids just made of mortar. <laughs> those linebackers. And uh, we had a couple of kids with an extra bone in their ankle, <laughs> like Jimmy the Greek said. <laughs> and uh, it was just oh god, so much fun. My buddy Danny Rubinetti represented the eye ties. He was all state. My court and my black friend represented the black people. <laughs> The Irish were all over the place. <laughs> Jimmy Dunaway, by the way, full ride to Villanova. Played for the Eagles for one season. Uh, then, then played for Buddy Ryan. Uh, didn't really get off the bench, but just an incredible experience. Mike Horton, like I said, uh, almost made the Phoenix Cardinals. Kid looked exactly like Randall Cunningham. I might have told the story once. Uh, circa 1991, he was playing in Europe. He won uh, for Holland, their national team. He won four Euro Bowls, which is their Super Bowl. And fucked all these hot blonde white chicks over there. Hmm. And would send some of us Italian kids who were not exactly into the interracial scene. <laughs> would send us a picture of the white chick you fucked. Hey, with, with, hey fucked her last night. Ha ha ha. So fucking great. They were hot too. He kept telling me to come over there. He'd get me laid. And just as I saved enough money, he came back. <laughs> but he looked like real economy and went to a club called Club Quintessence. <laughs> in Staten Island. Staten Island wasn't far from where I grew up. You go over the Outer Bridge Crossing, you're in Staten Island. We could go there because they were open till 4 a.m. Usually, if it was run by the fellas, it stretched till 3 a.m. <laughs> and we took uh, Mike, Mike Horton's name looked exactly like I said, like Randall Cunningham, and we were talking to a bunch of chicks and guys. He signed autographs as Randall Cunningham. <laughs> I told guys, listen, good, don't blow up his spot. He's Randall Cunningham. And they totally bought it. That's how much he looked like. And they got, this kid's like, what the fuck's you doing on Staten Island? <laughs> oh, he's got a game and everything. Yo, man, what's up? Taking pictures of him. <laughs> but he was, uh, you know, an eagle at the time, the best eagle. <laughs> they, they caught some shit, but, they, you know, they, the, the Giant fan thing went out the window because he was such a big celebrity, they thought. <laughs> Perfect. And Horton ran it. He just went with it. Got free drinks. And Mike drank those real diabetes black drinks, like a slow gin fizz with extra sugar. <laughs> Yo, man, give me a frozen pina colada dipped in oil and sugar with a, with a cherry. All right, man, whatever you need. It was the stereotypical eye ties and the, <laughs> whatever the fuck you need, man. But but that's the club where, club contestants, where I heard there was a Spanish kid and like a, two like Hispanic kids were DJing. And that's where I heard this. I swear to God, this is all that came out of the speakers in this club from about 2 a.m. to 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> two and a half hours. This exact verse, nothing more, nothing less. Esta loca, esta loca, esta loca. Give me head. Esta loca, esta loca, esta loca. Give me head. Esta loca, esta loca, esta loca. Give me head. That was poor. Every once in a while, the manager of the club, the Italian guy, would have to make an announcement. He would cut into it. So every once in a while, you'd hear this like every three minutes. Esta loca. Esta. Jimmy, move your Camaro. Esta loca. Give me head. Esta loca. Nancy, we found your bracelet. 
Tony's got your bracelet, Nancy. <laughs> Outside, in the van. <laughs> Esta loca. Esta loca. Esta loca. Give me head. Okay, the, you, you can't get a bed in after 12.30 on the Knicks. They'll take the Nick game tomorrow. Martin Luther King gave Nick game. Bulls at the Garden. The line's minus five. You can get a bed until 1 a.m. and that's it. Talk to Bobo in the back. Esta loca. Esta loca. Esta loca. Give me head. Anthony, your mother said get the bread at Calandra's. She's not talking to the guy at Videllos. All right? She will not take bread from Videllos. Get the bread at Calandra's. Esta loca. Esta lo And Jimmy, move your fucking Camaro. I'm going to have a toad, I swear to Christ. Esta loca. Esta loca. Give me head. Dun, 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 dun. Yo, Abernathy, your mother wants to know what you did with the money for dental school. <laughs> That's a joke. Enjoy the fucking song. Stay secure tomorrow night. Sing and Lisa, Lisa, live tomorrow. <laughs> Singing I Love You Baby, number two on the charts. Esta, my other club, Foxes in Jersey City. <laughs> Foxes in Jersey City, hot new dance club. Tomorrow, Lisa, Lisa, Stacey Q. <laughs> Live. And they sign autographs in the back. Esta loca. Et give me head. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Jimmy, the Camaro's toad. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a shit. Go to Brooklyn. Go to Pier 19 in Brooklyn. You can get it. You just can get it. Find the 500 cash. What I give a shit. You better have that kind of scratch. Otherwise, you're going to be late for fucking Thanksgiving. Otherwise, I'll see you at your Aunt Terry's. I'll be at your Aunt Terry's with Calandra's bread. Esta loca. Esta loca. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that, 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 I'm not even a little bit exaggerating. <laughs> I'm not even a little bit exaggerating. <laughs> That's what happened. That's what life used to be. <laughs> so much fucking fun. And then I went to Bud's Ain't No Bakery <laughs> and did a lot of cocaine in Santa Claus. All right. When I come back, I'm going to review the Megyn Kelly. Uh, <laughs> I went off on a tangent. I wanted to make that point about stereotypical voices, about how it's not racist. I love everybody. But sometimes you got to admit, not everybody talks. <laughs> like Denzel Washington. <laughs> well, they do talk like him, but in training day. <laughs> Diabetic piss, we're back. Are we ready? We're ready. Hey, Bill O'Reilly on The Factor. <laughs> and Talking Boy. I figured out just from watching Bill O'Reilly, The O'Reilly Factor, that Bill O'Reilly is, in fact, talking points. <laughs> in the beginning of The, uh, the, uh, uh, the Factor, The O'Reilly Factor, Bill O'Reilly has this way of broadcasting where he, he, like, he's very dismissive. Like, that's how he wins an argument. When someone's winning an argument with him, at the very end, he just, he just real quick ends it with his opinion <laughs> as if it's right, and the other person just doesn't have a chance to speak. And he just and goes, and that's it. And he moves on. Uh, like, he'll do something like this. Well, I understand that you uh, don't want the wall. Or rather, well, you know, a lot of walls have been proven that uh, they don't work. There's actually statistics. Actually, they prove they do. Moving on. <laughs> uh, and that's that. We'll move on. Uh, you have also said that, um, oh, you think uh, a that's lot exactly of... That's exactly what he does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we need it. Okay, let's move on. No, you're actually wrong on that one. <laughs> <laughs> he does it to those broads a lot <laughs> The good looking broads mm -hmm. He's trying to be so like He's trying to impress them so much mm -hmm. That smoking hot black chick Ebony <laughs> Holy Christ you know what I would I wouldn't do to Ebony Oh, oh. living Christ Whoop whoop <laughs> What is that What was that That's the alarm <laughs> What alarm Your cum alarm <laughs> The Ebony alarm God damn that's creepy shit <laughs> I mean I've never met I mean that is just so creepy <laughs> Out of nowhere, you're like a creepy stealth bomber. <laughs> what? It, what is that? <laughs> that is like a child rapist sound. <laughs> I said, "What I wouldn't do to Ebony." Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Isn't that the sound of a submarine? I don't whoop, know. whoop. Uh, yeah. What does that mean? A submarine? <laughs> what? What is the joke? I, I don't know. That you're going down. <laughs> you gotta know. You just made the. He doesn't know. <laughs> God in heaven. Beep, beep. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? So you're going down on her? Is that the joke? Is that the joke? I don't tell me what it is. Ebony, I, is it a black joke? Am I, am I missing a black joke? No, I don't know. I said Ebony's hot. Beep, beep. <laughs> that was like the Hillary Bark out of nowhere. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. 
Okay. You know what? From now on, I'm not going to point out the creepiness because it just adds, it just starts a fucking very awkward thing here. And you tried to see my dick before. I did not. With me taking a piss, man. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop. You don't think the neighbors can see? What neighbors? They're all asleep. Look at them. <laughs> Unless they have a drone. We need that publicity. <laughs> and talking boys. Is Artie Lang a pervert? <laughs> Coming up on the factory, you've entered the no spin zone. And that thing he does with his hand at the beginning where he winds up the spin. <laughs> Been mailing that in for about six years. I think he needed uh, Tommy John surgery. <laughs> Towards rotator cuff doing the spin move. <laughs> Beware, you've entered the no spin zone. <laughs> and that's what he was. So you know, the first thing he uh, opens up with is some, a segment called Talking Points. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he makes an argument about something, uh, you know, topical. And a very Bill O'Reilly-esque, Fox News-esque <laughs> type argument. And 90% of the time it's about Trump or something nowadays. And I've noticed from watching it, this is my, just my savvy media mind. This is from a guy who graduated from the Connecticut School of Broadcasting uh, in two months. <laughs> top of my class there were only eight, there was eight of us <laughs> all of us uh, you know had community service that's why I was there I needed an activity <laughs> and on Howard Stern show I heard about the Connecticut School of Broadcasting and I got in about half a scholarship <laughs> my father was paralyzed and uh, we had no money and the guy took pity on us and said uh, well you could it was three thousand dollars for two months guy Knocked it down to like 1200 <laughs> Wow. Because my, my old man was sitting there. He couldn't move. My family was on welfare. <laughs> That's why I got points. And he said, this kid can really, uh, he has a future. You're like the LeBron of blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> Meanwhile, LeBron was, I think, two years old at the time. That joke didn't make any sense. <laughs> that joke was up there with, wait, 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 wait. And my joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I figured out that Bill O'Reilly talks as if Talking Points is a person, <laughs> not the name of a segment. He goes, and Talking Points thinks <laughs> that Donald Trump should release his tax returns. If he doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Now, every president has not given the tax returns, but every president since 1976 has. So Talking Points feels <laughs> that uh, uh, Trump would offend Talking Points. If he did. So I'm thinking, okay, He's talking, it's kind of cool, he's talking as if the segment is a person. Then I realized the big secret <laughs> about Talking Points. Talking Points is a person. It's not a segment. But guess who that person is? Bill O'Reilly. He's talking about himself in the third person as Talking Points. <laughs> he's talking about himself in the third person as a fictional character that is Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Name talking points. It's the fucking most annoying thing in the history of broadcasting. Uh, but, well, there's a couple of Rush Limbaugh openings. <laughs> Another successful caller abortion. <laughs> Remember he did that? What a call, a left wing, the liberal caller would talk about it. He would piss them off by, he did this thing where he'd make a vacuum sound. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd hang up on the guy. <laughs> Another successful caller abortion. <laughs> and uh, you know just to show the horrors of abortion he was pro-life blah 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 so it was great it was great to figure that out how media savvy am I <laughs> that talking points is actually Bill O'Reilly talking about himself in the third person so he says like a talking points today so uh, that Hillary Clinton will not release the speeches at Goldman Sachs talking points thinks that's ridiculous <laughs> talking points thinks that she as Hillary Clinton and the Clinton machine, where all those scandals should be a, the bigger person and release those speeches. Talking Points thinks what's in them. <laughs> Could she say something anti-Semitic? Well, Talking Points thinks Goldman Sachs is Jewish. No. But there are more less Jewish or less Jewy, as a racist would say. And Talking Points is not a racist or an anti-Semite or homophobic. Of course not. Well, talking Points thinks that Talking Points tells the truth. <laughs> and if Talking Points... Ever was in the room with Hillary Clinton. She would point this out. Uh, well, well, talking points is not a she. It's a he. It's her. It could be anything. It's actually transgender. Talking points needs its own bathroom. Talking points is not a man or woman. It's transgender. 
<laughs> and if Talking Points was in a diner, they would demand that they had the, <laughs> you know, I need a place to be safe. I need a place <laughs> where Talking Points, which is not a man or woman, something in between, can be safe, can be happy. And if Talking Points doesn't get that uh, special bathroom, Talking Points will sue somebody. <laughs> As you know, Talking Points can be very litigious. But I'm off on a tangent with Talking Points. I'm off on a Talking Points tangent. <laughs> Don't forget this weekend, Miller and I will be at the uh, Blah Blah Amphitheater <laughs> in uh, St. Mahara, New uh, Missouri. I'll get up and do what you're hearing. <laughs> I'll be incoherent. Talking Points thinks you should go to the bathroom during this time of the show. <laughs> Dennis Miller will then get up and do an hour and a half of brilliant stand-up comedy. And then for some reason, split the uh, bill. Split the, uh, the payment with me, Talking Points. And Talking Points says make the check out to Talking Points. <laughs> they say, should you make the check? Should we make the check on Bill O'Reilly? No, 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 no. Uh, that's your rhetoric. <laughs> I don't, I don't buy your rhetoric. Talking Points doesn't buy rhetoric. Talking Points doesn't buy anything. <laughs> Talking Points makes money. So, make the check out to Talking Points. Make the check out to Talking Points. <laughs> the typical figure for one show: two hundred fifty thousand dollars to Talking Points. And Dennis Miller gets the rest. <laughs> Fox News knows that Talking Points gets some of the money some of the time. Talking Points gets the first 20 minutes worth of the show. Is me. That's Talking Points. But I make myself the name Talking Points because I want all the money. That's right. I want brownie points. <laughs> when I kiss the ass of my boss, Rupert Murdoch, I get brownie points. So Talking Points gets brownie points. That's right. And that's the matter. <laughs> Coming up, does Krautheimer agree? <laughs> then he goes to that guy who can't breathe. The old guy who can't breathe, the creepy Dracula-looking guy whose ass they kiss. He says the same thing the other people say. He looks older and smarter, but he says the same shit Karl Rove says, the same shit that the 24-year-old blonde they hired out at fucking USC says, who majored in poli sci and can put the, a sentence together. They all say the same shit. If uh, Bernie wins another state... Hillary's going to really have some explaining to do in Philadelphia, but she's got the super PAC. Blah, blah, blah. she got the super delegates. Okay. <laughs> now here to say the same exact thing everyone else has said. Here's a guy who can't breathe, who looks like Dracula, who we have on quite a bit. Sam Krautheimer. <laughs> Sam? <laughs> so let the talking points go. Talking points, sinks, that's it, and that's the memo. <laughs> Sam Krautheimer. And you say? He does that thing. And you say? <laughs> Like they're in a fucking uh, 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 a filibuster in 1870. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton talking to Quincy fucking Adam. <laughs> Quincy, and you say? Well, Bill. Then we go to Krautheimer. Well, <laughs> the first half of Talking Points is right. I agree with that Obama is certainly in a very <laughs> unique situation. And we're out of time. <laughs> what do you mean we're out of time? Well, you took too long to breathe. <laughs> talking Points thinks. That Charles should be allowed to breathe. Man, it's not his fault that he can't breathe. Some gutter snipe hit him in the neck in 1938 before he got in the army. Uh, uh, talking points just burped. <laughs> and talking points is very ashamed. That's not Bill O'Reilly, talking points. <laughs> by the way, by the way, if you want to uh, give more money to talking points, you can go to the uh, Bill O'Reilly app store. <laughs> Uh, and by anything, you, we have a Talking Points t-shirt, a TPT, and known as a TPT, Talking Points T, and you can get it anytime, and you're going to love it. And we're here. We're here to the next spot where Bill O'Reilly will take over. You're the no spin zone. I'm Talking Points. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Well, th <laughs> <laughs> they just cut him off. <laughs> Speaking of app stores, my favorite fucking thing is Arnold Schwarzenegger on those commercials. What Some video game must have backed up the Brinks truck. Oh. Just backed it up. The same Brinks truck they backed up for bon John Bon Jovi to do John Bon Jovi to do direct TV commercials. <laughs> How the fuck did they get John Bon Jovi? He does nothing. He's an arrogant fuck. <laughs> Met him a couple times two hours. You don't want to have a conversation, dude. Don't don't open your mouth and ask me to talk. <laughs> Very dismissive. Okay, you got a little more pussy than me. <laughs> At the Jersey Shore, <laughs> Nero! 
Yeah. <laughs> so they somehow got him. What, what are they paying him then? I mean, you're savvy. You're, you're media savvy. It's uh, astronomically. Yeah. yeah. Talking points, thanks. <laughs> that uh, John Bon Jovi is not worth it. <laughs> and that's talking points. And that's not. I was going to put uh, <laughs> some of these people out to notice, but Dan came across <laughs> and said, uh, wait. Lay and wait. Maybe they deserve next year <laughs> to get the ouster. Right now, you'd be the good guy. And talking points is ready. <laughs> we have an email from one of the fans. <laughs> Bill, are you talking points? <laughs> Bill doesn't understand what you mean. Bill does not understand what you mean when you ask if he's talking points. Talking points does not understand what you mean when you ask if he's Bill. <laughs> and I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, remember... Buy a uh, buy a Talking <laughs> Points T-shirt, a TPT. It's all, they're only seventy two dollars. <laughs> for seventy two dollars, you can have a Talking Points T-shirt. A great gift for Father's Day. Great gift says. for Father's Day. <laughs> Absolutely, a good point. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Thank you, TPT. <laughs> uh, great gift for Father. Who wouldn't want it? Who wouldn't want it? And for an extra twenty, you can get it autographed. For an extra twenty, <laughs> I will sign Talking Points. <laughs> Can you sign a Bill O'Reilly? Well, of course I will, because that's who I am. Well, you just said you'll sign a talking point. Get off my phone. Get off my phone. It's your wife. Does he have a wife? Oh, no. Oh yes. Well, he did. Mrs. Point? Yeah. <laughs> don't you remember what happened with him? I don't watch this shit like you do. It was in the newspaper. Yeah, you, I, you read the newspaper like Kardashian shit. Hey, yo. What do you, you read all the gossip shit that a broad reads? Yeah. What, what happened? He paid a... Give me the skinny. A police... Uh, I can't remember where the guy was. Retired police officer? A or guy a, police officer? A, a current police officer. Oh, to wait. follow to follow his follow wife. Her? Yeah, because yeah, she had a boyfriend. And fuck her? Because <laughs> some guys do that. I know guys who... They, they hire guys to fuck his, their wife, so they look. the wife looks like the bad person. <laughs> but this was just a follow? Yeah, it's just a follow. Well... <laughs> and, and he found that she was fucking somebody? Uh, that she had a boyfriend, yeah. Wait, well, are we going to get sued? Are you sure about that? Yes. That really happened? Yeah, yes. Because uh, that's a major accusation. That really happened? Yes. Because uh, you, you really, I mean, you lie quite a bit. Oh, whatever. What's the latest lie? I don't even bring it up sometimes. I wait for the, for the show because it's so obvious. Oh, that you had dinner with Michael Douglas. I had dinner with Michael Douglas. <laughs> oh, but the dinner, Dan, is like you, you, anybody could make up what you said about him. You said, he goes, oh, God, I love sex. I love sex. It's a fatal attraction. <laughs> I had dinner. What you said at the dinner, he yelled out the yes, most common fact, a... the most common fact known that anybody would know about him, and he yelled out the name of his most popular movie of all time. <laughs> when you had sex with Wallen Brandon, you go, I'm the Godfather. What did you say he said? He said that he was a sexual addict. Why would he say that? Because man? he was drinking. To you. Why he, would he say that to you? He said it to me and Tom Brenneman. Who's Tom Brenneman? He's the voice of the Cincinnati Reds. Okay. And he was the voice Michael of the Michael Douglas, an A-list yeah. actor yep. from Hollywood royalty, yes. is at dinner with you two gutter snipes. Right. And yells out, I'm a sex addict with a fatal attraction. R right. Uh, I, I say, Dan, I say you're bullshitting as <laughs> far as long as a day is long. You are bullshitting. That did not happen. All right. If you how I mean, that did the, he didn't yell that out. How OK, Bill let's let's start let, to get his wife's boyfriend let's start, investigated let, by the cops. Let's start. Let's start with a cut with a couple of questions. OK, let's start diffusing the bill the uh, the Michael Douglas lie before we get to the Bill O'Reilly lie. Uh -huh. I know about Bill O'Reilly. Why? Were you at dinner? What were the circumstances that led? What led to you and Michael Douglas and Tom Brenneman having dinner together? Just the three of you. Yes. What led to that? Michael Douglas had come into the Cubs booth the right. night before. Okay. They were playing the Dodgers in Los Angeles. And he was doing a movie called Falling, you Falling in, Man or Falling Down. Uh, Dan, where he, you don't know the name of Fall. You know the name of Fall Falling Down. I, I don't remember the the movie bombed, it tanked. Uh, Dan, it's one of his most popular films. Falling Down is it, absolutely. It's a class. It's considered a classic by people. It was just on the other day. They were playing him and Duval and Falling Down. It's a great movie. 
Falling Man. You remember movies <laughs> like you Grant's a film. You don't remember Falling Down by I Michael don't, Douglas? I don't remember Falling Down. God, the bullshit. <laughs> Do, do I remember think, he walked through. Do you through, think that makes him cooler? He walked through LA. Do you think LA. it makes you cooler that you don't remember? No, he walked through LA in like a suit or something, right? Just stop. in a bow tie. Just stop. <laughs> Didn't have a bow tie. <laughs> Forget it. Okay, falling down is the name of the. Okay. Film. Okay. So what happened? So he was filming. You're in LA. Yes, with well, the Cubs. Because you travel with the Cubs. You're right. Why is Tom Brenneman there? He's the broadcaster of the Cubs. I thought he was the Reds broadcaster. He is now. He was the broadcaster of the Cubs then. Go ahead. And he came into the booth and he said, would you like to, would you guys like to come and see me shoot this movie? And so Tom and I went to, they were shooting at an army surplus store. He walks store. into a, sh- a booth. He would, no, he sat down and talked to the broadcasters. He talked to Tom and Ron Sano. And he, and he invited you all out yeah. of nowhere to watch him shoot right. a movie. Okay. Yes. And, and we and, went. And you went. And. Um, to watch him shoot Falling Down. Right. right. And. <laughs> oh, fuck. I can't believe I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> What happened? Well, tell so me or not. We got. Is this the way, is this the story where you're gay? No, no. no. We got to the we got to the uh, the Army Navy store where they were filming in Los Angeles, right. and Tom and I felt uncomfortable around Joel Schumacher, yeah, the director, right? Who's a gay guy? Yeah, and he just There's was always a gay guy. <laughs> he, Dad, and, please just shout from the mountaintops. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, why are you uncomfortable around him? He just was prancing around, and uh, would you well, guys so like? What's the big deal? Would you guys like to see behind the scenes? And we just kind of felt uncomfortable. Why? Because we did. Why, Dan? Because I I don't know. Because you're deathly afraid that you're homosexual. <laughs> no, I'm not deathly afraid. Nobody. I've been around gay guys. Yeah, it's, it's no big joke. But you, what do you yeah. think, Joe Schumacher's trying to fuck you? you know, Tom is from Cincinnati. He's very right wing. It sounds like you are too. No, I'm not. Yeah, well, it sounds I just, like it. Was, it. Uh, you know, it sounds like you. You sound like the most closed-minded person no, ever when you I'm talk not. about this. So, or you're really gay and you're uh, nervous about it. So we left. We we left the uh, Army Navy. First store. of all, Joe Schumacher is definitely out of the closet, right? I, I don't know if he is or not. Right. <laughs> well, I'm like, a, but whatever. He seems gay. Let's just say that. I think I think he is. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, did you, you did you fuck him? <laughs> you would know for sure. Just keep telling the story. It's not live. We'll, we'll okay. play, you know. Go ahead. Um. So uh, that so we left early, and then he texted. You left early because you were afraid Joel Schumacher, Joel Schumacher wanted to fuck you. Uh, we both, Tom and I, felt we were just uncomfortable around Joel Schumacher. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So Go we ahead. so we left, and then Michael Douglas felt bad that we what left. What did he do that made you uncomfortable? He around just him? was. I don't know. Wow, it Dan, was, you have so many issues. I mean, you clearly, you, uh, no, Dan. You understand? Yeah, okay. You understand that you wanted to fuck him. Yeah. Whatever. So you had to leave. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's clearly the case. That is not clearly the case. Dan, you're on a movie set. There's probably four thousand other people. No, there, there. weren't. We what? were in a small Army Navy surplus. Was there a store. camera guy there? There were a couple of cameras. Were there guys. lighting people there? You're talking about a fifty million dollar budget film, a major film. There was key grips. There was lighting guys. They were not all in the store. Okay. It was a very small. It, the Army Navy store. Who else is in the store? Tell me. A couple of the actors and a couple of the the tech the crew guys. Uh, would you say at least ten people? Ten, yes, at least ten. Okay, but that's uh, it. Maybe. There weren't my the store. The, your apartment is bigger than so the you store. You were was. uncomfortable around a, a, a major sure. director of film. We were. Uh, you're uncomfortable around him in a small store. Michael Douglas invited us to see this movie. Right. We got. We saw Michael Douglas for five minutes and then spent the rest of yeah. the next hour with Joel Schumacher and I think and ten other people. And, and, no, no, we were over in a corner. So Joel Schumacher walked over to the corner while, he just, while he's directing a film and was prancing in front No, of him. they were setting up. They were setting up. So, yes, he, he, yes. so the, the way he chose to use that time was to walk up to you and this guy and prance. Yes. That's what you're saying? Yes, that's what he did. Uh, Why would he make that up? Because, if it didn't happen, it's in your Joel head. Schumacher could sue me. Because it's in your home. Because it happened. Head. Because it's in your secret gay head no, that it it's happened. No, not. Go ahead. So what happened? Do so you, oh, when he's doing it, do you say, well, hello, Mr. Schumacher, why are you doing that? Or, did it get awkward? Did, it, did you force a dialogue with him? No, we were just. How is he prancing? What's he we doing? We were just uncomfortable around him. What is he doing? He, he was just. Describe so, prancing. What's he doing? <laughs> he's just. Hi, guys. 
What's he doing? <laughs> is it verbal? Yeah, he just was. What's you he know? saying? Nice pants. What, what, what's he saying? Uh, what made you so uncomfortable uh, <laughs> that you had to leave the set of a Michael Douglas movie? We just kind of felt that he was hitting on us. <laughs> Dan. Dan, you're not a good looking man. <laughs> good man, man good, wow. Gay, wow. Neither am I. Wow. You think you're good looking? Dan, yeah. you don't think you're good looking. I think I'm okay looking. Dan, you're you're not a good looking okay. person. Schumacher is openly gay. Okay. Says that on his Wikipedia right. page. Well, we don't even know how much. <laughs> So, 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 do gay guys hit on you a lot? No. Right. So, uh, so, but the one gay guy who's hit on you, how many gay guys have hit you in your life? How many gay guys have hit on you? Total. In the, how old are you, 53? Probably 10 or 15. 10 or 15? Yeah. <laughs> Give me the exact number. I don't know. Oh, well, okay. I'm just... How many have you acted on? <laughs> Shut up. Okay, so one of those ten or fifteen in your fifty-three years is a is a major movie director. Uh huh. Okay. How was he hitting on you? Tell me what happened. He was just you or Tom, or both of you. Uh, Tom's better looking than I am. Both oh, of us. Believe yeah. me, a lot of people are. <laughs> oh, God. You can't think you're a good looking guy. Yes, I. I think I'm a good looking guy. You're not, Dan. Okay. You're, well, you're awful looking. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm, me too. I'm not a good. Not a lot of people are good looking. Are you that delusional? <laughs> who says you're? Who's told you you're good? Mike Bochetti's told me I'm good looking. <laughs> you know, to him. I mean, you're about as good looking as you're like him. You look kind of like him. Oh, thanks. You're Dan. You're <laughs> you're closer to ugly than you are good. Looking. Oh, wow. I'm not insulting you, dude. Wow. I'm telling you, there's no way a multi-million dollar director hits on you. Okay. Well, it happened. Uh, you wanted it to happen in your head. But no, it I didn't want it to happen. Okay, so how did he hit on you? Tell me what happened. I just, I, I don't How did you right. know? Because you know. Uh, I, uh, huh? How did you know? Because you know. We just, at some point, you know Tom how, and I go. Being a fellow gay guy, you yeah. know what happens. Yeah, okay. Just say it, dude. What? That you're a gay guy. I, yeah. Go ahead. So you, you were getting, you're not explaining why. You explain prancing. You can't get away with just that. He just was like, you is know, he like skipping in front of you, showing you his ass, <laughs> like, like a like a two lions getting ready to fuck? Like, what is he urinating next to you? To, to, to you know, what's he doing? We were we were in an army navy surplus store. You there said were, that there were like army navy jackets. Oh, you two should try this out. I bet you you look good looking in this. Or, you know, oh, how about this one? And just <laughs> and at some point, Tom and I were looking at each other like, okay, we're gonna get out of here. That made you leave? Yeah. What are I? You are pathetic. We came there to see that Michael is so Douglas. So creepy. That made you leave a set. Yes. Michael Douglas didn't know who you were. You came to see oh. Michael. Do you think Michael Douglas was getting ready to talk to you or something? He watched the Cub games in WGN, so, so he knew who Tom was. Okay, so and he invited you to the, the set. I've done it, too. You don't want to talk to the person? Unless the, unless he knew you'd be good for Joel. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an asshole. This story is so weird. Oh. Because I've caught you in lies about other stories. What? Uh, the, where? The, the fucking uh, the, the Shaloff for the French show in L.A. You were off, off by eight years. Oh, uh, yeah, I was off. You were. I was. I was, I was off. I, I, I couldn't. Completely off. Yeah. Because it didn't happen. It, it happened. All right. well, how did it happen then? You described something that could not have happened. Physically could have happened. Because it w what you described couldn't have happened until eight years after the show. So what happened? We went back. We went back to oh, Las Vegas. Okay. Yeah, eight, eight years later. All right. So, so, uh, what, so Joel Schumacher. Uh, did Tom want to fuck him? Like, no. Did, Tom's it, Tom's straight. Yeah. All you have to do is if you Tom's ever, straight. So you say that like you should send that like okay. He's one of my straight friends. <laughs> How do you know Tom's straight? Tom's straight. How do you know that? Well, I don't follow him into his bedroom, but he's married. He's got kids. Okay. A lot of people are. Rick Steve. And uh, he, you know, Tom's very right wing. Yeah, so, so. so I guess it sounds like you are too. No, I'm not right wing. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Or you're very scared of your real life. No, I'm not very scared of my real life. Dan, Dan, if a, if a major director says you'd look good in these, <laughs> sh you do not leave a, a movie set. We didn't like storm that's, that's out, but weird. after you after fifteen or twenty out. minutes of him hovering around us, we were like, "Let's get out of here." Fifteen or twenty minutes 
What else happened in 15 or two? For 15 minutes, he said, try this on. <laughs> what happened? We, nothing. So you left because of nothing. We just, we didn't want to stay there any longer. We just felt like he was <laughs> hitting on us. Yeah. So that, that made you leave? Yes. That Why? made us leave. Why? Because we just wanted to kind leave. Kind of flattering. Well, Why'd you tell him, look, I don't go that way. <laughs> Why did you say, look, that's what I would do? I'd laugh about it. Yeah, well, Why? Because I'm so secure. I'm not a gay yeah, guy. Okay. I'd laugh about it. I would know there's no chance of me fucking the guy. Yeah. I mean, I, it sounds like you were afraid. Your feelings might come out for him. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Look, it's a major director. Uh-huh. I've seen, by the way. <laughs> if there were a by the way, he, fire too, I could get by in By the it. way, he is foul looking. <laughs> so you'd be two ugly gay guys. Who has told you you're a good-looking man? Shut I, I, No one has ever described you as good-looking in my, the five years. I, I didn't say you. that I was good. I said I was okay-looking. You're not okay-looking. Yeah, I am. You're, you're not okay-looking. Okay. You're hideous. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not, you know you're not a good-looking guy. As a matter of fact, you're odd-looking with the arms and the... You're not built right. <laughs> that, that fat ass. Your calves have extra fat on them. God. Oh my God! It's, I mean, I'm I'm I am not a good look. I'm I have an odd look. My body is in terrible shape. I I my head is too big. I have bad hair. I'm not a good looking guy either. Not many people are good looking, Dan. They're not. You're not one of them. <laughs> you you would you would describe yourself as okay looking? Yes, absolutely. Like if you were on Match.com. Well, well, I would never be on Match.com. Well, if you were, Dan, okay, calm down. See, this is what happens. You get so defensive, but for some reason, it's a, it's a, it's a scenario I'm giving you. It's not true. All right. What, what if you were? What would you describe yourself as? Look wise. Give me the description. Uh, one to ten? Give me, yes. I would say a, a six. Well, okay, that's all right. A six. Yeah, that, that's, I, so I'd say five. <laughs> We're both, I guess we're both sixes. Then, <laughs> okay, but give me your full description. I want to see how you see yourself. Give me some oh, person personality. <laughs> I'm a guy who likes to travel. Right. <laughs> know that. <laughs> I'm fun. Okay. <laughs> You're fun. Dan, you sit in the corner and look into the abyss People, as a matter of fact, when you're with me, people go, "What is wrong with Dan?" <laughs> they do not, Dan. They do. Yeah. You you look into Dan. You have a sad look on your face when you're with me. Where I I go, I don't know what he's thinking about, <laughs> but it looks like he's going back to a very bad thing that happened to him. <laughs> no. Is it that Joel Schumacher hit on you? <laughs> you're not giving me full details. He asked you to try on a couple of Army and Navy outfits. And for 15 minutes, what's Michael Douglas doing? How come he's not he over He was there? in his trailer. Well, why? Because he was blowing you off. <laughs> Did you get the hint? Well, no. Then he called up and asked us, invited us out to dinner. And we went to dinner. We went to dinner in the hotel. I talk to you on the set. I don't know. Where was Joel Schumacher? <laughs> he was not at the dinner. For dinner. <laughs> he was not at the dinner. Because he doesn't care about you. <laughs> Did you tell Michael Douglas that Joel wanted to fuck you? Did you tell him you left the set in a huff? No. Did you tell him, listen, Mike, I'm sorry, we but we were left. in awe of Michael Douglas, so we didn't really. Yeah, you wanted to fuck him. <laughs> if he wanted to fuck you, different story. You the fuck. <laughs> you just said no. that. No. You're in awe of Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas had dinner with you two guys? Yep. The three of us in the hotel. In the I, I, honestly, I want people to write in. <laughs> oh. I, I want to know Why? who thinks this is a true story. Oh, my God. Who thinks this is a true story? <laughs> I, I, there's no way. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. You and Tom Brenneman saw the movie Falling Down. <laughs> it hadn't come out yet. He was filming it. I'm saying. Uh, later on, you saw it. Mm -hmm. And you made up this in your head. <laughs> oh, no. What if this happened? <laughs> you saw Joel Schumacher directing it. <laughs> and you knew him from seeing him at the meetings. From these seminars. From, from getting my St. Elmo's Fire DVD from, box what's set. What's St. Elmo's side. Fire? He what? directed that. He did? Yeah. 
Well, you know that. Though. That was his first movie. Uh, his first. Wow. Look who knows a lot about Joe Schumacher. Oh, okay. Look who I caught watching St. Elmo's Fire the other night. I don't know, Joe Schumacher. I, I admit it to you. It's a guilty pleasure. Reminds me of high school. I saw it with my girlfriend. Yeah, well, so did I. What, no, your friend, who happens to be a girl. <laughs> yeah. Who knew since the first grade. I met my girlfriend that year. Like people do. I don't know Joe Schumacher's first film was St. Elmo's Fire. It, it, that was his first big hit. I, I, it might not have been his absolute first, but it was one of the first Look one or two. Who knows a lot about Joe Schumacher. Uh, I guess he didn't creep you out that much. <laughs> I didn't know he was gay at the time. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Dude, okay, a couple of questions for you to write in. Uh, this is, by the way, two, this is a great 250th episode. We can get off Rick Steves. We're now on the Joel Schumacher. <laughs> Dan, don't you understand psychologically what happened? No, he, nothing. He came up. He was probably just whatever making goes, small talk. He knew you were a guest if it really yeah, happened. Whatever Just goes, don't talk for a second. And then you could rebut this. Bad choice of words. Uh, <laughs> you can refute this. All right. Uh, my opinion. If, in fact... The bullshit that Michael Douglas invited you to the set. The bullshit you didn't even know what the name of the movie was, whatever. You know, you know, you know his first hit is uh, St. Elmo's Fire. You didn't know the movie that you were on the set of. You didn't know the name of him. It was such bu- Please admit that was bullshit. You, you knew the name. No, I couldn't remember whether it was falling down or falling. I couldn't you, remember what Dan, the... You know his first hit was St. Elmo's Fire. You know everything about the guy. No, you I didn't don't. know the name of the movie he Saint directed. Elmo's that Fire he was a- on, the movie that he hit on you on the set of that you met Michael. Like, you didn't know the name of that film. That's bullshit. <laughs> it's not. I know how you, you your brain works better than that. You would have known it's the movie he wanted to fuck you on. <laughs> he, he also wrote Car Wash. Yeah, no shit. Bunch of black guys having a shower. <laughs> Car wash is good. what's the car wash? The car wash is a metaphor for a prison shower. <laughs> what else could it be? I actually just thought of that, but clearly that's it. It's Joe Schumacher's fucking dream. <laughs> the, the original script was probably a prison shower, and the head of Warner Brothers said, "Listen, can we make it a car wash?" <laughs> okay, still black guys, but they're in, still in orange jumpsuits. <laughs> Think about it. It's black guys in orange jumpsuits <laughs> taking a shower. <laughs> it's prison. It's Joe Schumacher's dream. Uh, it's his sandals. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so again, I, I have to play shrink here. It's so obvious. Yeah, okay. So you get there. Yes, sir, go ahead, you get play. there, and here's an openly gay, successful director. You knew that he was we gay. Didn't know was Guarantee gay. you knew he was gay. No, we didn't. Dan, you all know each other. <laughs> you all know each other and you're like well, what's gonna happen <laughs> and he comes over and probably just you know doesn't even talk to you for like a half a second maybe he trips and he hits one of his his hand hits like the, the, the army navy costume <laughs> and you see that and he goes hey look at this I hit that thing how you doing guys <laughs> and you turn that into him prancing <laughs> The way he tripped, you made that prancing. <laughs> and him hitting the uniform made you, <laughs> in your gay head, go, yeah. he wants Whatever. me to put that outfit on. Ugh. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Believe me, time is straight. I've tried. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Yeah, okay. <laughs> time is so right wing. Uh, I've tried I everything. All these, have all these gay scenarios about me. Uh, you, I have them. Yeah. You bring them up. What the, I'm making this I up. I brought up that. I'm making this up. Yes, you are. How all am I making gay, it up? All these gay scenarios. Dan, no. you brought up that you're in the, I'm making up the Army Navy store. No, it didn't. I, I didn't have to make it up. It happened. Well, I'm not making it up either. How am I making it up? Oh, well, th- this is what he did. And this is, the, you know, he tripped and said, oh, I tripped. And, yeah, Dan, yeah, it's called okay. comedy. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I can't believe you don't see that. And I know why. You have an enormous amount of money coming in a will. (laughs) And your father would be devastated. Would your father... Let me ask you this. If he knew you fucked a successful director... (laughs) Who's not Nancy Myers. (laughs) Dad, I fucked a successful director. Nora Ephron? Guess again. (laughs) 
Joel Schubacher. <laughs> Prancing around. I can only hope. You made it sound like it's like like that. What is that? Uh, uh, the, 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 the Tramp. What, what's the, the, the Disney movie? The tr- Something of the Tramp. Beauty of the Tramp. Lady in the Tramp. Lady of the Tramp. Like, like they're prancing around with their uh, fucking, it's like a cat with its tail up. <laughs> That's what you made. He's prancing. No, he wasn't. Okay. He wasn't. Pr- you know, listen to you. You sound like a gay guy who knows. Like, believe me, I know. Her. Believe <laughs> me, I know what a guy wants to fuck me. I, I, you know what? I can admit that he probably was more attracted to Tom Brenneman than me. Because you were too. <laughs> no. And you're thinking maybe I get Tom in a threesome. Maybe this <laughs> yeah. is the way I fuck yeah. Tom. This is my Saint Elmo's fire. Oh yeah, no shit. A lot of shit going on here. <laughs> wow. Okay, here's the here's the, the questionnaire. Do you think Dan's good looking? <laughs> okay, one to ten, give me what Dan is. I'm, I'm dependent on you, Monica. Yeah. Even Monica can't fake <laughs> fake away. Monica fakes that I'm good looking. She's a fan. Well, I, okay, I'm gonna get a ten at least from Steve Torelli. I know that for sure. Why? Because <laughs> I'm the only one that answers his his every e- email on the hour. Is he attractive? <laughs> you met him. I know. I'm kidding. He looks like Joel Schumer. <laughs> What's the? <laughs> he had one the other day. What's the weather like in New York City? Yeah. I don't. Uh, Steve, really, I don't know. He looks like Joel Schumer. <laughs> uh, and and uh, yeah, again, I, I I feel bad for Dan. You have to you uh, understand this. I'm not mocking him. I'm not all kind of. But how do you not prancing around? Again, I had an agenda. Again, I had an agenda for this last part of. You realize this was just five minutes I was supposed to spend. I, I had an agenda. Real I didn't quick. bring it up. You did. What I bring up? Michael Douglas. Oh, Michael Douglas is on. And what are you talking about? I didn't. Yeah, bring I was up. talking about. We were talking about before. I was talking about the Megyn Kelly special. Right. Which I was supposed to talk about. <laughs> And then somehow you you're telling me you fucked them. You bring yeah, out whatever. I what I bring you, up. I told you off the air yeah. that we went to dinner with him right. and he had the shakes and he just talked about what a sex addict he was right. and how one woman at a time doesn't please him anymore. So what Dan, that's insanely unbelievable. That is happened, Art. What do you want me to tell it you? It didn't happen. If it didn't happen, I think you're so Michael Douglas can sue me. Dan, he doesn't know you. He doesn't care. He Why would he me. sue you? Why would he sue because you? Because that's what? slander. It's not slander. It's public knowledge. That's my point. You're not giving me any new information. That, that, what are you, what are, you're a delusional fan who says, yeah. I had dinner. And you say what anybody would know. What we anybody to, would know about him. We went to dinner. And then he kept yelling out the name of a movie. He was in you retarded. <laughs> Give me new new information, Dan, is slander. <laughs> That's information everybody knows. He admitted to being a sex addict. He admitted that. I'm not. He oh, admitted that. Wh- and he's you, in a movie called Fatal Attraction. Did you read that in the, the uh, gossip columns, Art? Dan, it was, David Letterman brought it up to him. Gossip columns. Believe me, dude, I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> I would have stayed there if someone's prancing. I'm very secure. I'm not going to let somebody fuck me. <laughs> You were afraid yeah, he would fuck you. Yeah, that's exactly what. Well, why else would you leave? Because we were uncomfortable. We didn't want why? to be there anymore. Because you might fuck him. No, not because we might fuck him. Yes, Dan. That's why you leave. Don't you understand? Yeah. I feel bad for you. He he could tell you were gay and he was taking advantage. Yeah. He said, I'm a big director. I could probably fuck this guy. <laughs> no. The gator was up. And he's probably trying to get rid of Tom. <laughs> oh. And Tom probably knows. Anyway, Tom would have probably left at a certain, certain time. <laughs> a major movie star invites you to the set, and I know you. You're not a rude person. You, you, you are not someone who does inappropriate stuff. That's very rude to leave like that. It is. Without telling Michael we didn't, Douglas. We didn't without, storm telling Michael, out. without telling Michael Douglas you're leaving, it's very rude. He wasn't. A, we don't know where he went. And Tom's like, well, what do you, what do you think? We, they were about to start shooting again, Dan. He was coming mm. back. Hey, I have been on movie sets where you sit there for five or six hours. What movie sets were you on? And why would you sit there for five or six hours? And so you, 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 why would you leave? You knew Joel Schumacher couldn't fuck you right there. <laughs> what were you afraid was going to happen if you stayed? We were just uncomfortable. What were you afraid was going to happen? We were uncomfortable. That what? That he wanted to fuck you. 
and you might fuck him. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, Thank th- God I got you to explain everything. Any shrink, myself. any shrink would yeah. say that. Yeah, anybody would say yeah. that. Am I here's the here's the here's the uh, survey. Uh. Am I right in thinking that Dan left because he was afraid <laughs> Joe Schumacher would fuck him, or he would fuck Joe Schumacher? Not that he's attracted to him, but you know Dan being a gay guy said maybe I can <laughs> fuck on director. It couldn't hurt my career. <laughs> And uh, first of all, that's the first question. Did this story even happen? Did this even happen? Did he have dinner with Michael Douglas? That's like saying I did it with Bruce Springsteen. He kept saying, you know what? I was born to run. Man. <laughs> oh, I was born to run. And I, you know what else? I was born in the USA. <laughs> Look, I wear jeans all the time. I'm a regular guy. That's what it's like. That's exactly <laughs> what it's like. You gave a, there's no suing because there's no new information. You're saying stuff the whole world knows. I did it with Roman Polanski, and he kept yelling out, I fucked the little girl. Well, I fucked her right in her ass. I gave her quaaludes and fucked her. Yeah, oh, my God. It was like Rosemary's baby. That was like Rosemary's baby. And we ate Chinatown. That's where we ate Chinatown. I did it with Michael Douglas. What's that like? He kept shaking, saying he was a sex addict. And yelling out fatal attraction. <laughs> what else did he say? Can you remember anything that was he interesting? Talked, he talked about his family. He talked about baseball. What, what he did he say? You know, Tom's dad is Marty Brenneman, the famous Cincinnati Reds broadcaster. So he, right. he talked about Marty his Brenneman. dad. <laughs> what did he say about him? He said that he was a fan of the older broadcasters. He was he listened to Vince Scully. What Scottie. a boring dinner. He loved Harry Carey. Uh, he loved, what was the guy in Detroit? He talked about the guy in Detroit. Um, oh, the old the old broadcaster? Yeah. Uh, Hal, uh, uh, I know you're talking about. Classic guy. Yeah. Um, the guy who just, uh, he just died. Yeah. Uh, the, Hal Linden, Hal. Uh, the guy, the guy um, I know fired exa- him. I know exactly when, when who you're new, talking about. When the new owner came and he fired him and then they brought him back. Right. Yeah, he was in the same vein as Harry Carey and yeah. all those guys. Yeah. Um, uh, it's pissing me off. I don't remember it. <laughs> yeah, but you too. remember, uh, you remember. Uh, and those Joel, are the last ones. You remember Joel Schumacher. <laughs> uh, look him up, because now I'm on board. I, I, I can't. I, I can't stop thinking about who it is. Fuck. Who's that announcer? Anyway. Well, we got a new Dan story. Unbelievable. You are radio gold. It is just. It is a gold mine. And you said I can't believe uh, Ernie Harwell. Ernie Harwell, yeah. So, so I can't. You know, you said I can't believe I'm about to tell you this. So don't tell me then. This is the juicier than anything. Well, the Rick Steves thing's extraordinary. <laughs> but if you heard Michael, do you have any? Try to find Joel Schumacher tape. <laughs> he's not like Rick Steves. I mean, Rick Steves is like Rick Steves sounds like he's wearing a Vegas showgirl outfit when he's talking. That's what he sounds like. He sounds like he's got a sequin gown on, about to do the fucking chorus of Bellagio's O underwater. <laughs> We're going to get some big organs. Okay. Unbelievable. So, you know, I was about to say Megan Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's the survey. I just remember before we started the podcast, you said. Listen, if we don't if if we don't go that long tonight, no, right, right. we could always do some more tomorrow. Like that's gonna happen <laughs> with you, 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 the treasure trove of Dan Falato. No fucking way, the mining, the comedic mining that goes on. This chick, right, who, I, this chick who wants to say, well, who keeps trying to save the seals is hot. I don't know, if she's blonde. I'm like the fuck. I, don't know. I guess she's famous, but she gets don't oh, cruelty to animals. Like, I give a shit if they beat a gorilla to death. <laughs> like, yeah. The pig there. I eat a pig. Really? What do I give a shit? What do I feel? Oh, look, the chickens are pissing on each other. Let me let me get out a fucking tissue. I saved a mouse today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the, what's the, what would you put in your ass? <laughs> there was a mouse in my friend's ass, and he's not clean. I put it in my ass. I put it in my ass along with the watch from Pulp Fiction. I'm such a big fan of the movie Pulp Fiction, I have a watch in my ass. <laughs> I caught that the other night. Christopher Walken's monologue about that watch <laughs> oh, is so fucking funny. Out of every great thing Christopher Walken's ever done, 
And this is big praise to the writing of Quentin Tarantino. That might be, if you put one thing in a Christopher Walken time uh, machine, a time capsule, it might be that monologue. <laughs> it is ass. <laughs> God, all that fucking, those classic Christopher Walken pauses. And uh, you follow what's going to let some, <laughs> some greasy, <laughs> slimy slope. <laughs> Get this watch. Yeah. So what, what are you about to say? Yeah, what would you find? Did you find uh, Joe Schumacher? Schumacher. Yeah. <laughs> if there's anybody watching this that, <laughs> let's say, loved Batman forever <laughs> and went into Batman and Robin with great anticipation, <laughs> if, I, if I disappointed them <laughs> in a way, then I really want to apologize because it wasn't my intention. You should have left. My intention was just to entertain them. <laughs> Man. <laughs> He's never, you know what? I, maybe it's because I'm thinking of you now. I always thought he was less pronounced. That sounded like a Richard Simmons exercise tape. <laughs> Listen, you look good in these arms. Uh, what what's a good title for this movie? <laughs> falling uh, uh, up, falling. What what should I do? Listen, Tom, your father was just a fantastic. <laughs> oh man, I love listening to Marty Benedict <laughs> talk about. Oh, there's another red on second base. <laughs> can can Joel get to second base? <laughs> can Joel get to second base with Marty Junior? <laughs> Who's this? Who's this? Oh, you're friends of Michael. Oh. <laughs> Who is this hunk? <laughs> look, it's a fucking hot day, isn't it? And look at that arm hair. You're, uh, what's your oh. name? What's your name, Dan? <laughs> hey, Dan. It was 110 degrees in that hey, fucking Dan, Army Navy store. 110 degrees. <laughs> uh, isn't that shirt cum cumbersome? <laughs> what about the sweater under the shirt? Oh, that's your, that's your hair. I'm sorry. <laughs> Old joke. <laughs> Why don't we get out of these cumbersome clothes? <laughs> Listen, Michael is taking a little longer. <laughs> yeah. Michael is on the phone with his uh, drug addict son. <laughs> yeah. He's very upset. Michael's son's about to be sentenced to seven years in federal prison. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and he's a little worried because when he was in L.A. County Jail, <laughs> he was just there for a couple of weeks, and they found out who he was. And, uh, yeah, don't uh, his son is visiting the set. Do not look directly at his face because uh, they gave him a tattoo in the shower. And, uh, yeah, just don't look directly at it. It's, on a, it's a tattoo on his face. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's, there's four, hour, four arrows in tattoo ink pointing towards his mouth. And above it, it says pussy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A little, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I can't believe I'm laughing. Uh, so, yeah. So, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Brenneman. Did you bring him? Uh, who are you? I'm, I, I'm, I'm Dan. <laughs> You're Dan. You seem a little nervous. <laughs> Did you get some of the punch? Amanda, bring some punch to Dan. Uh, yeah. You'll love the punch. <laughs> I think the punch is going to have a little bit in there that's going to calm you right down. Yeah. They see the key grip. He's on the punch. See him? Ooh, look at those arms. They are matted down. Jesus. Jesus. It looks like a Brillo pad after a big washing and scrubbing. What are you doing later? What's going on later, guys? <laughs> Speaking of later, do you have later hosen? I heard you were German. Oh, my God. That means you can follow orders. I guess. Yeah. Can you do the goose step right into my... Why don't you goose step it into my... <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're looking so uncomfortable. Why are you uncomfortable? I know. Well, Tom's straight. I understand. So am I, though. I'm straight, too. <laughs> Why don't you come out to the hotel room? Let me show you how straight I can get. I can get very straight. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little curved. But most of the time, it's straight. And uh, I don't know. We can go over my first hit, Staying on Almost Fire. I know you're a big fan of that. Yeah. Have you got any post uh, notes? I might redo it. I might redo it, but uh, instead of English, they talk <laughs> Filipino. But oddly enough, they still go to Georgetown. 
What do you think about that? <laughs> are you uncomfortable? <laughs> we're just throwing out some creative ideas. He'd asked if, he asked if we ever been to Morocco. <laughs> oh, of course he did. <laughs> you ever been to Morocco? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I call? I call it Morocco de Spirito. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. That's my nickname for Rock. I call it Morocco de Spirito because we've gone together. <laughs> and he was reluctant at first. <laughs> ah, whatever. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Morocco to Spirit. <laughs> and uh, your default name is Dan Filato. It says, wow. <laughs> well, your stuff was on the record player. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me moving it. We're going to play a little music here towards the end of the uh, shoot. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Michael's favorite group is, uh, uh, what, 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 do they, what do they call themselves? <laughs> uh, Bedazzled. <laughs> They're an electro tech band out of Sweden. Yeah, I turned to Michael onto them. I see them quite often when I go to Europe. Do you like techno? <laughs> yeah. It, they're called bedazzled. But only one guy from the group goes to the shows because the others don't have to go. You just need a laptop. Yes, it's very fun. <laughs> very uninhibited. <laughs> and and the, the, the chicks love it. <laughs> and of course we love chicks, right, Dan? <laughs> you know what the chicks love, Dan? A Navy outfit. <laughs> Why don't you try that on for Joel? Joel being me. Try that on for JS. JS being me. Joel Schumacher. Director of yeah, SEF. St. Elmo's Fire. Why don't you try you add that to let it go. Let your feelings go. There he is. There's my big fella. Oh, you're, I don't know what you're worried about. Your chest is absolutely extraordinary. That's an extraordinary chest. Now, it really it looks like you're wearing a cardigan. That hair is disgusting. But uh, now, do you ever get that hair in like eggs if you eat them? Because that would be gross. I don't want them anywhere near my bread from uh, Zabar's. I bought, I brought bread from Zabar's. You understand me? <laughs> I hope you do. Well, it looks like you want to leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just remember, Joel's always here. <laughs> I'll always be falling down <laughs> for you. <laughs> and falling up <laughs> for your love. I made that up. <laughs> hope you like the movies called Falling Down. And uh, don't worry. I'll make it a happy <laughs> ending. <laughs> 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 One thing I know for sure, Dan, is the movie we're making. <laughs> We'll have a happy ending. Maybe not falling down, because if I recall properly, everyone dies. Ugh. But the movie we make on the side, Dan, <laughs> the movie called Our New Friendship, every single time you see that movie, <laughs> if you give me the chance to show you that movie every once in a while when we're in the same town, <laughs> that movie will always have a happy ending. And that I guarantee. Bye to the rest of you guys. I don't, I don't know your name. <laughs> but by the way, d d what's your name? Tony Brenneman. I loved your father. <laughs> your father, uh, Martin. Oh, he was great. Marty. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Shut up. Take care. Brush your hair. <laughs> and I mean your arm here. Take care. Brush your arm here. <laughs> you look very uncomfortable. Okay, I'll tell Michael you left. I'm just prancing. Every I'm doing a show called Prancing with the Stars. <laughs> Don't you want to do that? Prancing with the Stars? Directed by Joel Schumann? No. <laughs> you can't start a fire. <laughs> you can't start a fire without a spark. This one's for you, Dan. <laughs> Even if we're prancing in the dark. Da -da 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 -da. Prancing in the dark. Prancing? No? Bye. <laughs> okay, I'm out. <laughs> Joel Schumacher. Good for you, man. Nice. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> I loved Batman Forever. Ah! I went into Batman and Robin with great anticipation. It's if, I, if I disappointed them, it's in way, <laughs> then I really want to apologize. <laughs> if I disappointed, when he says disappointed, it's like cum is dripping from his lip. <laughs> if I disappointed, and that's falado jizz. Yeah, no, I don't think so. All right, we can't. I, we, that's how we ended the show. <laughs> Megan Kelly, my review was Jesus. 
Megyn Kelly's special that she said was going to be so hard hitting was the worst, most boring special I've ever seen a woman fuck. First of all, I have the fucking greatest Michael Douglas interview now. <laughs> I'll slip her a few questions. <laughs> Say Dan Filato, see what he does. <laughs> Dan, you mean the guy who fucked Joel? <laughs> You fucked Joel Schumacher. Oh. You fucked Joel Schumacher. That's the takeaway. That's the takeaway, as they say in politics. <laughs> Megyn Kelly, okay. Howard Stern did an interview with Donald Trump. I was there in 2003. I was in the studio, okay? And to me, it was an average Howard interview. Not even a Howard interview that stood out. Insanely better than the Megyn Kelly interview. <laughs> Not even close. Let me tell you something. Here's, a, here's props to Howard and his interviewing skills. And I was two feet from him doing those interviews for a lot of the time. If you do an interview with a guy and 12 years later that guy's running for president <laughs> and in a, the craziest campaign trail ever, that interview comes up. <laughs> they, they quote the interview for three straight days. That's a good interview. <laughs> and that's like an average one Howard used to do. And Megyn Kelly's like the new fucking... Uh, Edward R. Morrow. <laughs> you know what she asked him? Here's what she closed with. See if this will come up when he runs for president in another 12 years. Okay, let's have some fun. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite book? What? <sighs> What's your favorite movie? What are they at? An eighth grade slumber party? <laughs> Terrible. He goes, Citizen Kane. And then she doesn't, she doesn't follow up. <laughs> How about why? I guarantee Trump never saw Citizen Kane. <laughs> He, he knew that's the, that's the thing to say. That's presidential. All she would have to go, what's your favorite scene? Uh, your pussy's bleeding. <laughs> he would have deflected like he deflected the other time because he never saw a citizen again. He would have said, you're on your period again. She had blood coming from her eyes when she asked, did I ever see it? When she said, my, what she, what she said what's my favorite scene? She had blood coming from her eyes, her mouth. That's what would have happened. What's your favorite movie? Let's have, let's have fun. Favorite movie. Uh, what, what should I say? In his head, what's, what's your, okay, says the game. And then, uh, uh, what's your favorite scene? Uh, your pussy's bleeding, let's move on. And then he would have went, oh, you, she attacked me. Who asked your favorite scene? When you say your favorite movie, who asked for your favorite scene? She attacked me. She's a bitch, she's a whore, her pussy's bleeding. <laughs> Terrible. And then she's like, what's, your, what, what's the last book you read? And then he goes, all quiet on the Western Front. What? She had to say, first of all, not the art of the deal, not the Bible. Yeah. All quiet. On the way. <laughs> he said a book. That book was from 1942. His favorite movies from 1941. His favorite books from 1938. Yeah, this guy. I mean, there's a, a talk about following up. You should. You, you, have you seen anything modern? Have you seen a movie with a computer in it? Have you seen a movie where someone has a smartphone or sends an email? You want to be president? All quiet on the Western Front. <laughs> he never read All Quiet. It might not even be a book. I think it's just a movie. What the <laughs> fuck? Two of the dumbest answers to two of the dumbest questions ever. That's a Fox a prime time. And tomorrow on Fox, everyone goes, oh, God. <laughs> when you said, what's your favorite movie? Oh, we all in the newsroom. Wow. Wow, what guts. <laughs> what guts. When he said Citizen Kane, oh my God. And then remember you said nothing after that? He said Citizen Kane, you said nothing after that. If you tried to get away with that bullshit at Howard, you go, what do you mean? Well, well, why? You like Orson Welles? Nothing. Nothing. Softballs coming in. Underhand softball pitches. Let's have some fun. If Trump, if she said let's have some fun and Trump just started taking off his clothes, I, that would have been the great, I would elect, elect him for that joke alone. Let's have some fun. Okay. <laughs> The Michael Douglas interview. He set Dan up to fuck Joel Schumacher. That doesn't come up once. How's your dad? Shut up. How's your dad? She looks, she's perfect looking. Even at the age of 45, Megan Kelly is a perfect looking person, okay? If she looked like me or Dan, even though Dan thinks he's fucking, you know. A, a six. I said it was a six. six. Okay, whatever. That's even too much. Dave just got was here the other day. He said he was an eight. Yeah, well, I, who goose on just got more than anybody? <laughs> we believe you. No one believe. No one. No one thinks that's true. We laugh. We laugh behind Dave's back, quite frankly. <laughs> Unreal. 
Michael Douglas. And then here's how I, Laverne Cox. Who's Laverne Cox? I don't even know who she is. She was she's a black chick, smoking hot. But who is she? She that was another interview. <laughs> who is she? I have no. Clue. Is she like in uh, uh, I do not TLC know. or something? <laughs> I think she's a singer. First of all, Dan, you do know because you love all girly shit, <laughs> and her don't. last name is Cox. <clears throat> you immediately Google it. <laughs> the other person was oh, Robert Shapiro. <laughs> Robert Shapiro. Her big tease was, he finally tells me what he whispered in O.J.'s ear. <laughs> really? That what, what O.J. whispered in his ear. And the big surprise. You told me this would happen from the beginning. That, okay, great. Well, there's a fucking... How about <laughs> Good one. Unbelievable. She's becoming... You know, I like her and everything, but what a pompous ass she's becoming. And then at the end, the whole thing was to plug her book. The whole thing was a book plug because I think mm. they gave her eight mil for it, which she should blow the fucking Donald Trump for <laughs> getting her. Right after that bullshit happened where he said her pussy's bleeding. Yeah. And then they make nice, nice. All of a sudden, she's not a champion for women when someone backs up a Brinks truck. <laughs> you call women fat pigs? Here's an $8 million book deal. Thank you, Mr. Trump. We made up in the end. Her Fox friends are gathering around her. Great job. So great. <laughs> Thank you. And we met up in the end. We're fine. We're, I'm actually supporting him. <laughs> Unreal. Oh, the people at Trump Tower were so surprised to see me walk in. Yeah, nobody was. Shut up. The people at Trump Tower are happy they're getting their fucking benefits. <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares you walked in. Oh, you're right, Dan. Good point. Oh, God. <laughs> How pretentious. Talk about carried away with yourself. The people at the Trump Tower, you know when they see walk in there, they're more happy to see Amoruso. <laughs> the people at the Trump Tower didn't give a fuck. <laughs> they said, who's the middle-aged abroad? Uh, Is that a chick from Waters World? <laughs> Waters World. Okay, there's a guy on uh, the O'Reilly Factor who does a bit. This guy, he's called Water's World. Okay, <laughs> they talk about that bit as if they invented it, like it's the most innovative. What he does is he goes outside to the street and finds dumb people, which is almost everybody alive, and uh, and he just says to them, "Who's vice president?" And after a million people, one of them's going to go say something stupid, and that's who they leave in the piece. That sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> The show I was on for eight and a half years, maybe we did that once a week. <laughs> Only it was way funnier questions, way edgier, and by stuttering John, a guy with an affliction, to make it funnier. <laughs> Waters World asking some fucking dope whore from Iowa, uh, who's the vice president? That's funnier than John with a <laughs> terrible, vicious stutter asking... <laughs> <laughs> Asking, uh, uh, wait, who was it? Um, Paula Jones. Was it? Paula Jones. Yeah. Do you plan on sleeping with any more presidents? <laughs> no, no. During the campaign, Paula Jones was in the midst of that yeah. thing, and John goes to the press conference and levels the place with laughter. And she goes, she calls on him after asking right. serious questions. Did, did you? Did you <laughs> do you plan on plan on sleeping with any of the other candidates? <laughs> Didn't he ask a condom question too? I forget. Uh, did he but, but, no, but he leveled the place with, do you yeah. plan on sleeping with any other candidates? And she doesn't even know what to say. She's looking around like, what? <laughs> right, Paul Jones was the one that fucked Clinton. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, no, it was it was Flowers. Flowers. Jennifer, it well, was Jennifer Flowers, okay. a cuter one. She's at the back of that press conference, <laughs> levels the place <laughs> on every news cycle. Funnier, that one question got more laughs than any of two years of Waters World. <laughs> and and Bill O'Reilly, and first of all, you know, Howard innovated that and made it his own and made it great. <laughs> but guess what? Guess the first time it was done. This Bill O'Reilly invention. You know when it was first done? The first night Steve <laughs> Allen hosted The Tonight Show in the year 1951. <laughs> he sent the knots out, and I believe George Goebel, to do Man on the Street shit. And it's the exact bit. The exact bit. 1951 halfway through the 20th century <laughs> and here's how O'Reilly talks about it he believes these idiots who email him and say that's the first of course the first time a housewife in Nebraska ever saw it god that's so original you don't see anything like that on TV well yeah honey you have since the invention of TV <laughs> the day after TV was invented somebody did that bit 
<laughs> and here's what here's what Trump goes. Well, we got your emails about this innovative thing. We're very proud. O'Reilly. Of, uh, yeah, I mean, who? He said Trump. Okay, Trump. Trump. O'Reilly. Yeah. Here's what oh, O'Reilly goes on the O'Reilly factor. Oh, yeah, listen. Okay, we get email after email about how innovative and original uh, Waters World is. <laughs> And, uh, okay, here's the origin. Unbelievable stuff, I agree with you, but that's what we do here on The Factor. Mm-hmm. We try to give you original stuff. You know, every uh, every week we have a pitch meeting, and people pitch stuff to talking points. That's me, all right. Now, people pitch stuff all the time, and I reject stuff. And quite, you know, quite to ask Miller, I'm, I'm a broadcaster, but I have a comedic ear. I just do. <laughs> and, of course, you know, I can be funny. And I, every night I prove I think I can be funny here. And every night on the, on the road with Miller, by the way, four more dates added. <laughs> four more dates and four more books added. Apparently, we're writing at a record pace. We're killing Kennedy. We're killing Lincoln. We're killing time. I like to kill Waters. We're, we're killing, what we're doing is we're killing the spirit of America. Yeah. That's a quick joke. Uh, that was a funny joke. Somebody wrote it. I think it was uh, Artie Lang tweeted. What do uh, Fox News and uh, Flint, Michigan have in common? They both have waters that make you nauseous. Yeah. Good stuff. Anyway. Yeah, so Waters comes in one day. And I'm like, what's up? By the way, Bill O'Reilly uh, adopts that thing comedians do where he just uses the last name, like Spade, <laughs> Sandler. Yeah. Dennis Miller, like, invented that. So he's been hanging out, so he does that. Miller's here. <laughs> hey, Gutfeld's here. <laughs> Gutfeld and, uh, you know, Gutfeld's here. <laughs> Gutfeld and Miller. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Coming up, Rove and I go back and forth. <laughs> Coming up, Miller and I sell out an amphitheater. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if they want to see you do that more. <laughs> you come out and do, hey, so let me give you a Waters World anecdote, and then here's Dennis Miller. Mm-hmm. He's going to do two hours of stand-up. <laughs> then we're going to split the fucking paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Here's, uh, uh, one day Waters comes in and goes, hey, what if I do this? We'll do, uh, <laughs> I never, I go, wow, this is fresh. I know it's fresh. He goes, I'll go out. And, you know, I notice that a lot of people don't know stuff about, you know, just stuff, questions you think they know about, like who's the mayor or something. <laughs> and look, what we'll do is we'll just, you know, ask a couple people, and eventually someone will say something entertaining. We'll put that in the piece. We'll edit it. <laughs> and here's the innovation. We'll put in, like, movie clips that have to do with it, uh, old movies and stuff. And uh, he pitches that. And I'm like, you know, water's usually a dope. <laughs> but, you know, I, here's my comedic ear. I said something about that appeals to me. Let's try it. What can we hurt from trying? We got a big budget, huge hit show. <laughs> Ales, all these guys, they agree. I convince the guys up and up, uh, Murdoch, such and such, and all the great guys. David Hill, brilliant <laughs> genius, of course, who Audio loves. They okay. Waters goes out and Talking Points watches it. <laughs> I'm Talking Points. And I see it, and I'm like, this is fresh stuff. That I brought all the writers, I brought everybody up, this is what I'm looking for. Everybody, this is innovative, it's original. No one else is doing this on television. No, they, they've been doing it, Bill, <laughs> Bill since the beginning of television since someone invented el- the day after Edison said hey I invented electricity someone got a mic and did this bit 1882 I'm gonna say and uh, you know Waters is so funny no he's not Waters is a smug frat boy who, 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 who somehow got on TV you bring Waters down to the comedy cellar one night and put him on stage that's what you film that's what you film the guy, you put you, you put someone in a fucking room with with Waters World and Talking Points, and they wouldn't be funny for five straight years unless they accidentally hit their fucking head on a pipe. Good one, that's innovative. Do it again. Not a funny person. Annoying, an annoying, privileged, entitled, spoiled frat boy. The kind of guy who tries to fuck your girlfriend at a wedding. The kind of guy whose head you want to cave in with a bat. Waters World. Hey, who's my friend? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Then they cut to some clip of a movie they have the rights to because Murdoch is a fucking creepy rich guy <laughs> fucking Mick Jagger's ex-wife who looks like Mick Jagger now. <laughs> Mick Jagger's ex-wife, Jerry Hall, looks like Mick Jagger. <laughs> Murdoch looks like Mick Jagger's father. <laughs> How creepy. That fucking look on his face. Like, I just ate rock star pussy. <laughs> Trump is, yeah, no, all no, right, yeah, yeah, so that's innovative. I said more Waters World, and we have it on all the time, and guess what? Kid parlayed it into his own show. Him, Gutfeld, Gutfeld started on this show, Gutfeld, another guy, please come to the Comedy Cellar. Please, Gutfeld, please, let's hear your act. Let's hear your open mic bullshit terrible act. And I hear through the grapevine, Bernie from the I'm a Show, is giving me shit. 
watch it, Bernie. You're <laughs> out of your league. You don't want to open up this fucking avalanche. <laughs> Take the fucking Ben Franklin glasses off your white forehead. They get on O'Reilly and they bow to him. Gutfeld just fucking interrupts the conversation with awful jokes. Hey, what about this? <laughs> Not innovative. Come up with Waters World. Gutfeld's World. Gutfeld. Great Gutfeld. You know what his middle name isn't? Busta. That's for goddamn sure. You're not busting a gut around Great Gutfeld. <laughs> Looks like a fucking elfin midget. I don't know why I hate Great Gutfeld. I, mean, I just do. He's hateful, but I, you know, I'm not, I don't know why I'm talking about him. He's on the five. He's on the five. That black chick, first of all, looks like she had... It looks like uh, Carl Weathers had the Bruce Jenner surgery. <laughs> oh, God. Unbelievable. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm fat shaming. I'm body judging. I'm lashing out at people more successful than me. I guess they are. I don't know. Pretty. And better looking than the two of us. Uh, Dan, again, this is coming from a guy who's ugly too, so I can tell you this. Don't go around thinking you're a good looking man. I'm telling you as a friend. So that's it. So people say, how do you get so innovative? That's why. Water's world, we, that's our mark on the world. So innovative. Unless you go back to 1951 <laughs> and the Stern Show, which did it insanely better and edgier. And that's talking points. <laughs> All right. We're going to stop. It's, it's morning. <laughs> Artie Fan Clips, we officially did a deal with him. Exciting news. We had a phone call with Artie Fan Clips. He's officially our head of promotion. That's how I'm doing shit now, guys. This is our 250th original episode, and uh, we're proud of this fucking show. And the fan base is enough to make us a good living combined with the other shit I do <laughs> or whatever <laughs> but I'm telling you right now guys starting June 6th I start filming the Judd Apatow HBO thing with Pete Holmes called Crashing Again they made me block out a full month which is I think I'm in like over half of the episodes it's like I'm a regular on an Apatow directed HBO show which is I mean out of nowhere that happened I'm very lucky that's, a, that's like a major show business thing mm. they're paying me very well and our, we were going to make June 2nd our next vacation, the day after uh, Memorial Day. But I got to be June 6th, I start there. So The woman from the gun registration wanted to know how much you're getting the, paid. For, exactly. <laughs> she still, why would she? <laughs> that was this show? It's, it's, I felt like we did that four weeks ago. <laughs> so, so, in other words, June 2nd after Memorial Day is not our next vacation. We, we take six weeks. We've only taken one. We're overdue. Our first vacation is June 6th because I am I'm back filming. Uh, that's the first week of filming, the Apatow thing. And look, so what I'm asking you to do is, you have podcast fans, I love you, you're loyal, I want to be loyal to you, but I will be doing stand-up that I have booked, and I will be shooting an HBO show that for a little while I'm a regular on, which I have to pinch myself, it's unreal. Insert fat joke there. <laughs> and, uh, and, and do this podcast as much as I can. We promise you four a week, sometimes there's three, but we do three-hour shows. We try to make sure you're satisfied, because we love you. But uh, when you come back, when I come back from vacation, I still owe them shows. So I'll be filming from June 6th to like, you know, August, a lot of the summer. And sometimes or the plan is to do a podcast from the set. Judd and the people from HBO have already okayed that. Pete Holmes, they're nice enough to say in my trailer, if I can interview whoever's there. Uh, I play myself in the show and other comics are on it. We'll try to do podcasts from the set which will be cool, but uh, just bear with us. And my point is, Artie Fan Clips is just the start. There's so many fans, like about a core of like 30 people who are so passionate about the show. I love you. You promote the show. What Artie Fan Clips is going to do, he's a real talented guy who works in the industry. And uh, Canadian, go figure. <laughs> and he is going to bombard Facebook, Reddit, all the shit with his work, which promotes the show. And he has been instructed to work with you other guys. If he's impressed by you other guys, or I am, and this sounds like you want to do it, I'm not assuming you do. If you'd like to work with us, work hard to help him promote this show. Because what I'm saying is, as cool as Apatow and HBO are, and it's the coolest thing on the planet to work with Judd, I'm having so much fucking fun doing this podcast, and Danny loves it too. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need with the great James Flippin'. If I can get a little core business here where I can afford to pay you guys full time and I have enough subscribers to where 
It's more than a living. It's what I make anyway, without the stand-up and everything. I will do just this podcast. I will run a network with other shows. I have other kind of Russ Eve, <laughs> my friend that's hilarious. He wants to do a funny show about finance that he knows a lot about. I try to get Dave Attell to come out of his vampire uh, <laughs> afternoon mode and maybe do something. I have a lot of funny people who want to do stuff on the network. We're going to add a video component without question. That's coming soon. We'll film this bullshit and do little sketches. And Artie Fan Clips had a promotion. Danny's going to be like the head writer or whatever. Uh, my sister might help out. It's going to be exciting, but it's got to be a grassroots social media thing that I am embracing at the age of 48. <laughs> it, it, I, as cool as HBO is and my stand-up career is still going strong and the movie shit, I got a sitcom pitch I can't tell you about right now, but I'm going to pitch it everywhere in L.A. And I just signed with the biggest agency you can get. They, they re-signed me. I worked very hard to get back to the point where an agency like that wants to work with me. UTA, United Talent Agency. Guy named Matt Rice is the head of the thing over there, and he, you know, he's Will Ferrell's guy. Vince Vaughn on down the line from Jack Black. And it's the place to be with comedy, especially television, and especially with the digital media thing. They they run the world with that. They're backing me. As cool as all that is, if with their help and you guys with Artie Fan Clips Dan on on the on, on my social media, if you guys make this a real business for me, where I can make like the woman heard one point two million. <laughs> I make just over six figures doing just this for my kitchen. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm an open book. Who's listening? Who cares? It, it, so it's worthwhile. It's great. You make this to where I make the kind of money I make with all this other shit, I will drop it. That's how much fun I'm having. And if you like the show and that means something to you, help us out. All right? Artie Fan Clip's officially on board. He's on the payroll. We negotiated. And uh, get ready to, to, to see his work because it's going to be great. and It'll be all over the place. Help him out as much as you can. Monica, I'm down. <laughs> and if you're on the payroll, it's going to be a lot of fun. Danny, thanks for a great show. How long was that? Thanks one? for 250 shows. No, two, 250 shows. In all seriousness, This man. is the 250th. This is the 200th. Yeah. Well, we did a couple why. of best ofs. So they, they, and they had been numbered in. So this right. is actually the 250. This is our 250th. Danny, I love you, man. That, yeah. talk about, I mean, Dan really, really uh, pushed me to do this. He really did. Because when we left DirecTV, I thought we were going to, Go to Sirius and make people eat crow. But I realize that Sirius, as great as it is, that's still a corporation I'm working for. And it's not uncensored. Danny explained, yeah, though, no, this is. <laughs> and then some other smart people said, make it subscription. So you guarantee making more money because we wouldn't be making any money with, some, you know, with advertisers. And on top of it, they could go edit yourself. So this worked out in a way that's insane to where I'm making more money than most people do because you guys are so loyal. And 250 shows, and I got to say this, I bust Dan's chops. I, I would not do this show without Dan. I wouldn't do it. Thanks. It would be way worse, man. Dan adds shit to this show. You can't even put into words what Danny does for this show. And sitting here, uh, you know, this was his idea, by the way. <laughs> Little stuff like like Boschetti doing the weather. and It's just knowing how to organically change shit. That, that sounds simple, but it's not. He asked, he said, oh, you should, he saw me do stand-up. He goes, you're more comfortable. Sit on the couch, hold the mic like a stand-up. I'll sit here. The guests will sit there when they come in. And I feel a million times better. And the show went to another level, I think. So uh, uh, thank you, Dan. Hail, thank hail you. to you. Hail, hail to you, brother. <laughs> I don't say it enough. I, I, I would not, if Danny couldn't do the show, I seriously would think about not doing it anymore. That's how important he is to me. Ben Carson would not separate our heads. He better not. <laughs> this Herman Cain. Don't separate Artie and Dan. And I'll, I'll only leave if I get a lead in a new Joel Schumacher movie. We know that. <laughs> well, now we know that for sure. And I'll handle travel. I'm Rick Steves. And I'm the head of travel for Dan's movie career with Joel Schumacher. He just signed an eight-picture deal. And I'll be doing travel. Seriously, Dan, it's unbelievable work. And flipping James Flippin, I like you know how I feel about you. <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Gino and Cotton. Chris Cotton, of course, is a preacher in the Philadelphia area now. <laughs> He's got more rhymes than the Bible's got Psalms. <laughs> Look that rap song up. And uh, Gino Biscante is, you know, one of my best friends, hilarious, Matteries, everybody. They know who they are. Sue Costello. And of course, uh, Dave Juskow now and all the regulars. Monday. The comedians are back, by the way. I put comedian that on Twitter. Table. Every month, comedian roundtable. David Tell, myself, David Juskow, and Russ Maneve. Three comedians and David Juskow. 
I'm kidding. Uh, no. We're going to do our sets like last time. We're going to do all our sets. We're going to schedule stand-up sets in the city. All of us. After we get, we're in that diner mode where we're, we're always funny in that diner mode, I guess. <laughs> Last the time you guys loved it. So we're going to do it again. Instead of the diner, we're coming here with cigarettes and coffee and some food. And that post doing stand-up in the city all night comedian talk is usually very angry, bitter, and funny. That's Monday, the next installment. Yes. Tape it Monday to later Tuesday. Into Tuesday morning. Okay, so uh, that's all I got, guys. I love you. Thanks for the 250. Thank you, Dan. And uh, Artie Thank Fan you. Clips. It's exciting. Get this to where I'm making a bigger living and I won't do anything fucking else. I swear to Christ. I'll put a robe on like you, Hefner. I will not leave this apartment. I'm serious. I will send out for shit. Danny does Fresh Direct now. I barely leave. You know why I leave? To do stand-up to make money. But I'm excited about HBO, of course. Take care. Why not brush your hair?